important jam-packed transmission. But first, a key report with John Bowne. Racist go home. Racist go home. And the name calling blares on with nothing to back it up. Well, Trump haters, have you put much research or even logical thought into your claims of Donald Trump's supposed xenophobia? I know it's a big word and it's fun to use, but why is it that Trump made this statement in the first place? When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime. They're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. But I speak to border guards, and they tell us what we're getting. And it only makes common sense. It only makes common sense. They're sending us not the right people. It's coming from more than Mexico. It's coming from all over South and Latin America, and it's coming probably, probably from the Middle East. Could this have something to do with it? Last year, the Washington Times reported that more than 100 immigrants whom the Obama administration released back into the community went on to be charged with subsequent killings. And in 2015 alone, over 30,000 illegals from countries of terrorist concern crossed the United States' southwestern border. That was last year, clowns. Do you actually think denying those facts as they get buried by the dying lamestream media solves the problem you're gonna take this and probably spin it right as many as 20 americans are killed by unlicensed drivers per day the bulk of which are drivers in the united states illegally most of these manslaughter cases barely see any jail time because of their illegal immigration status as i started to testify sacramento los angeles uh, police commission all i was hearing was well, you know, these people work, they contribute, they have to take their kids to school. Like that was a reason that it was okay that they killed people. And every year, just driving, they kill about 3,000 people, which of course never makes it in the press anywhere. Uh, most newspapers now don't even uh, give the license or immigration status when they kill somebody. All Mexicans rapists. Wrong. No, he has. Wrong. Someone have a someone have someone pull it up. I don't know. How dare Donald Trump refer to illegal aliens as rapists, right? Wrong. Just last month, the website ncfire.info, short for North Carolinians for Immigration Reform and Enforcement, a website that simply tallies North Carolina child rape crimes, reported that in July of 2016, last month, 117 innocent North Carolina children were sexually abused by these guys, the same guys the anti-Trumpers claim don't exist. In December of 2013, 89 illegals committed 575 acts of sexual abuse on American children in one month alone. If North Carolina serves as the bellwether, can you imagine what's happening in states like California and Texas? And now, as the Washington Free Beacon reported, Sunni extremists are infiltrating the United States with the help of alien smugglers in South America and are crossing U.S. borders with ease. According to a U.S. South Command intelligence report, the command's J-2 intelligence directorate reported recently in internal channels that special interest aliens are working with a known alien smuggler network in Latin America to reach the United States. If you superimpose these facts on the anti-Trump protesters' concerns, at the end of the day, it's nothing less than a display of treason. Treason fueled by disinformation, insulting the memory of defenseless Americans killed and or raped by the very illegal aliens these delusional leftists continue to defend. But all of that horror aside, anti-Trump protesters, you just keep on ignoring the mushrooming epidemic of unreported child rapes by illegals, the unwarranted deaths of your fellow citizens, and the coming jihad that will eventually claim you or someone you know if the real Americans protecting your hide don't do something about it. Because the rest of us are working towards a day when you will have to answer to your ignorance. I'm a senior citizen, and I don't believe in dirty, filthy, lying politics. Okay, so who are you going to vote for? Can I ask you who you're going to vote for? You can count on it. I'm voting for Hillary Clinton. Hold on, folks. She just said she's against lying, corrupt politicians, but she's voting for Hillary Clinton. John Bound for Infowars.com. Thank you for joining us on this live, original, Thursday, the 25th day of August 2016.
Worldwide Broadcast. I'm your host, Alex Jones. We're going to be here for the next four hours today. Investigative journalist John Rappaport will be joining us to look at the ongoing uh, emails that are coming out showing that the Clinton Foundation was indeed a pay-to-play money laundering operation so that the Secretary of State could sell out the United States to the highest bidder and, of course, the American worker. Most of it is uh, deals uh, to allow the export of our technology, our minerals, uh, you name it, to multinationals. Uh, truly incredible. We also have an amazing clip of Nigel Farage in Louisiana with Donald Trump yesterday uh, that before I even get into all the news, I want to play in whole right now because I think it's important to kick the show off with Nigel Farage, the man that founded UKIP 24 years ago and who has taken the info war to Europe and has gotten the British to successfully go with the Brexit. So let's go ahead and go to that report. If you're a radio listener and want to actually see the video, it's on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com in an article by Paul Joseph Watson. It's also obviously important to share this video. Us, so we're going to be getting into that. Uh, we're also going to be looking at Assange. New Hillary Info could swing election if it catches fire. But first, Nigel Farage, the info warrior of Albion, being introduced by Donald J. Trump. Well, thank you, and good evening, Mississippi. I come to you from the United Kingdom with a message of hope and a message of optimism. It's a message that says if the little people, if the real people, if the ordinary decent people are prepared to stand up and fight for what they believe in, we can overcome the big banks. We can overcome the multinationals. And we did it. We made, we made June the 23rd our Independence Day when we smashed the establishment. And we did it. Everybody said we'd lose. And what did we see? We saw experts from all over the world. We saw the International Monetary Fund. We saw Moody's. We saw Standard & Poor's. We saw global leaders giving us project fear telling us that if we voted not to be run by a bunch of unelected old men in Brussels... <laughs> yeah, well, it's OK. They don't like me either, so it doesn't really matter, does it? But they told us our economy would fall off a cliff. They told us there'd be mass unemployment. They told us investment would leave our country. And David Cameron, then our Prime Minister, but no longer, told us we might even get World War III. And we saw the commentariat, and we saw the polling industry doing everything they could to demoralize our campaign. On the day of the vote itself, that morning, they put us 10 points behind. And actually, they were all wrong. And they were wrong because what the Brexit campaign did is we reached those people who've been let down by modern global corporatism. We reached those people. We reach those people who have never voted in their lives, but believe by going out and voting for Brexit, they could take back control of their country, take back control of their borders, and get back their pride and self-respect. Now the big card. The big card the Prime Minister decided to play in the referendum is he got a foreign visitor to come to London to talk to us. Yes, we were visited by one Barack Obama. And he talked down to us. He treated us as if we were nothing. One of the oldest functioning democracies in the world. And here he was telling us to vote Remain. So I... 
having criticized, having criticized and condemned his behavior, I could not possibly tell you how you should vote in this election. But, but, you know, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it, I'm hearing you. Uh, but I will say this, if I was an American citizen, I wouldn't vote for Hillary Clinton if you paid me. In fact, I wouldn't vote for Hillary Clinton if she paid me. <laughs> Folks, the message is clear. The parallels are there. There are millions of ordinary Americans who've been let down, who've had a bad time, who feel the political class in Washington are detached from them, who feel so many of their representatives are politically correct parts of that liberal media elite. They feel people aren't standing up for them, and they've actually, in many cases, given up on the whole electoral process. And I think, I think that you have a fantastic opportunity here with this campaign. You can go out. You can beat the pollsters. You can beat the commentators. You can beat Washington. And you'll do it by doing what we did for Brexit in Britain. We had our own people's army of ordinary citizens who went out and delivered leaflets, who went to meet people where they worked and where they socialized, who convinced and inspired people to go out if this was the one and only time in their life and to vote for change. So my advice to you, if you want change in this country, you better get your walking boots on. You better get out there campaigning. And remember, and remember, anything is possible if enough decent people are prepared to stand up against the establishment. Thank you very much indeed. Wow. Thank you, Nigel. What a job. Now, I raise this point so that you, the listeners, understand the real playing field we're on. The globalists operate in hoaxes and in fraud. But many times, if their hoax is successful and the public buys into the lie, it then becomes manifest reality. When we're submitting to their brainwashing, humans are basically able to build and create whatever we envision. We've proven that. And so they come out and they create the perception that Trump is a racist when he's not. They create the perception that Trump is 15 points behind in the polls when he's not. But then people start talking in the streets, even though they know the mainstream media is deceptive, even though they only trust the media 6% of the time when they're asked in scientific polls. But still, everyone starts parroting the talking point and then it creates a reality. And so how do you reach out to people who are being conned, who are being basically pushed onto a bandwagon? You have to explain to them how this phenomenon works. First, they put out the fake polls. Then it will skew people somewhat historically towards that number, not all the way. A lot of people aren't weak-minded, but still enough to win the election. But the mainstream media is so discredited now, it's out of gas in many respects. And we are still, how many days is it to the election? 74 days till the November election. A referendum against the corrupt press, a referendum against the corrupt mega banks. But you're not going to hear Nigel Farage anywhere on international television or national television. They're just blacking it out.
just like they're blacking out the fact that our reporters, two plus miles, getting there three hours before the rally started in North Austin, a supposed blue city, in a sea of red Texas. And we have the video, we have the B-roll, we're going to roll, I guess, now or later, uh, that just shows our reporters having to walk in miles and miles of major highways. They picked the convention center, not downtown, that was smart, but one in North Austin surrounded by cow pastures. Back when I was in high school, it was all cow pastures. Now there's some car dealerships and a few factories and things out there. But had to walk two miles in the 95-degree heat. And then there were lines so long overfilled in the convention center that, what, seats 20,000 people that our reporters couldn't even get in, even though they had press passes. They just, they just couldn't even get up there. And that was getting there, some reporters two hours, some reporters three hours before. You would think that'd be huge news with a news chopper over it showing it, but they didn't. This is emblematic of the deception. Welcome back. I'm Alex Jones, your host. Thank you for joining us. So, the corporate media, the establishment media, the discredited media, they're like the devil. They have to have many names to describe them. One is not enough. The enemy media is engaged now in a tripling down that Donald Trump is a bigot and a racist. That's what Hillary's been saying. I'm going to do a very special live report disproving all of this when we come back and start the next segment. It's going to be powerful. This, this segment is too short. But, but coming up in the next segment, I'm going to destroy the liar Hillary Clinton and her cohorts in the corporate state-run media. We have her. And quite frankly, I'm going to produce with my crew some informational pieces. I wouldn't call them campaign ads, but just ads in defense of truth that we're going to be putting out that are going to expose what's really going on. I mean, we have Hillary on tape saying black people are super predators that must be brought to heel. It's not just a quote. We have video. We have her saying, build a wall. We have Bill Clinton saying, build a wall. Now, now saying black people are super predators, instead of saying black criminals are super predators and white criminals are super predators, because that's, that's, that's what a Jeffrey Dahmer is. <sighs> or Mike Tyson biting Evander Holyfield's ears off. That's a super predator who can't control himself. Evander Holyfield can. See, the, it's so incredible, I can hardly even cover it because there's too much proof, too many facts. It's just crazy. It's crazy. And then they just come out and say he's this horrible racist, he's this horrible evil guy when she's saying build a wall. That idea came from the Democrats because other countries have them too. But it's the hypocrisy of the media not calling her on this. It's like when... Hillary uh, wouldn't go visit flooded Louisiana, worse than Katrina. And the media just said, that's okay, she's a Democrat, she's a woman. She's not John McCain in 2008. They made that a huge campaign issue that Bush fumbled the Katrina aid. Well, fumbling something is at least on the field, not just refusing to show up. But, but, but I'm, I'm digressing. This is all coming up at the start of the next segment. It's very, very important. We have all this other news. I used to read UNIDIR documents, UN documents, public statements they put out, and people wouldn't believe it 20 years ago. Now, every day, there are scores of articles where the United Nations says, do this or do that with your courts, with your border, with your laws, with your police, with your schools, with your colleges, with your sports teams. We are regulatorily more and more run by the unelected UN. There's a new article by investigative journalist Wayne Madsen, International Policing Protocol. Now, remember, a few years ago, we've had whistleblowers on from Homeland Security. They were told, you're not even allowed to say Islamic or Islamic terror when you're investigating someone, even if they've committed a, a violent act. 
When you're interrogating somebody that stabs people or shoots people, yelling Allah Akbar, you can't even say it's Islamic. Those words aren't allowed. Now this is being put into use internationally. And it's through the UN, through Interpol. See, the UN. Just like the UN sending tenfold the monitors they sent four years ago to the U.S. Just like the UN and others have been suing Sheriff Arpaio and uh, you know, running around and setting up strong cities initiatives with Justice Department backing. And Obama says, I don't even need Congress or the military or anybody or the, uh, for authority of war. I get it from NATO. We're in a treaty with those other countries for the North Atlantic Treaty Organization for a mutual defense pact. The other countries don't supersede us in that agreement. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a terrorism. This is a globalist takeover allied with third world populations. The third world populations, I don't blame them wanting a better life. The point is they're being used, period, in a seditious move to overthrow this country. It's not like they're over throwing something to make it better. They're overthrowing it to make us be a captured third world system with a permanent ruling class, the end of the middle class. This is what the New World Order prefers. It's what Obama's pushed. They, you, you go to Whole Foods, there's magazines everywhere for like five years, how to be austere, how great it is to be poor. They're, they're okay, great, you wanna be poor? You go ahead. I'm, I'm into prosperity and technology and innovation and integrating it with old world classic values, rugged individualism. But here's the deal. You're not gonna give China energy three times cheaper than us and screw over everybody in America. There are people that do care and they have a right for somebody to stand up for them and I'm doing it and you're doing it and nothing on earth's gonna stop us. You can feel the Titan giant rising. If you're a radio listener, you'll wanna go to drudgereport.com. Sick, Hillary plays clan card on Trump. Totally discredited. He had uh, criticized the KKK of his own accord decades ago, and again, 10 years ago, singling out David Duke specifically. But that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that she was actually part of the Dixie Mafia and had the KKK actually give money to help her run for office. It doesn't matter if her main mentor was Robert Byrd, the Grand Dragon, supreme leader of all of the claverns and cyclopsian protuberances. Because this is the inversion of reality. We're going to get to this special live breakdown as I go through these clips here in a moment. But first, again, Politico. Politico merging with the Washington Post in bed with the Clinton-Obama combine up to their eyeballs, the Bezos. Absolutely sickening. Isn't that just darling? We're going to be breaking down the facts here in just a moment. But before I go any further, we launched yesterday the latest installment uh, to the family of products, uh, nutraceutical supplements at InfoWarsLife.com. BioTrue Selenium. And folks really responded. And that's great because this is obviously something everybody needs. It's also super important because it helps fund the operation. But selenium is right up there with iodine and vitamin C. And of course, the three things work together synergistically. But when you take it with X2, Dr. Grip says it just only magnifies what's happening. I personally get a lot of clean energy from it. So I'm kind of at the point of like, do I take super mail with it? And then, or do I even need super mail with it? I mean, I'm just being honest with people. Uh, you can gauge it for yourself or take one thing one day and something else the next to kind of alternate. But these are amazing, amazing products. Bio True Selenium. In fact, I was talking to a group uh, who's world renowned for developing products because of his stringent uh, you know, quality levels. And he said, look, we are the best. Abs I, said, I said, so this is really one of the top ones. So I said, I wanna recommend some other brands and stuff, for, you know, they're in stores. And he said, Alex, we should really start putting all this in stores. And a lot of the products he's developed are, he said, this is the best from mustard seed. No one's got anything like this. And it really is super, 
over-the-top quality. Uh, available at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. And then he was showing me online, speaking of the devil, Amazon, hundreds of, he was pulling them up, uh, different seleniums that are out there for like 1995 and more that were smaller dosages and that was the synthetic type that you can't even really upload. And he was pulling up studies and showing those to me. He was showing some, some of them uh, on air yesterday. It, it's just crazy that these companies just go out and do whatever's cheapest and easiest and then gouge you. Ours is 1995. There are seleniums out there that are synthetic for $30. Total ripoff. I mean, take our Prostagard formula. What is it, six or seven ingredients, the same level of saw palmetto that is in a leading competitor that I hear ads on the radio for $29. Ours is less and has all the other known safe ingredients for your prostate. And, of course, if it's good for your prostate, it's good for everything. Women should be taking things like Prostagard. It, it just... It's just it, it, it's things that your glands need to produce certain things. I mean, here's an example. There are studies out, you can look it up for yourself, that if you don't have selenium that your brain electrochemically runs off of, if you're a male, it will take it from your brain and give it to your testicles. Because the body in our design sees procreation in an emergency starvation situation uh, as more important than you living or you being smart. So I, I must have been deficient in it because... Uh, I take it twice a day now, and it's amazing. All right, I, I'm going to stop talking about it. It's just that once I start discussing it, it really is that cool. And a lot of the things we have, like DNA Force, are proprietary and really complex, and uh, there's hundreds of studies per ingredient on it. You can even make claims with BioPQQ because it's a nutraceutical, like they're trying to make it and other things, prescription now. But when you get down to just selenium, it's just selenium, but it's the good selenium. But whatever you do, do your own research and find out what I'm talking about. And there are natural ways to get it as well in nuts and stuff like that uh, or in mustard seed. Uh, whatever you do, you need to get the selenium in your body. You need to filter your water. And look, I know most of the audience knows this better than I. I'm not preaching. I'm saying this to myself. Take your supplements, Alex. Alex, don't drink that iced tea at the restaurant unless it's filtered water. Ask them. And, and the more I ask... And more you ask, more and more restaurants go, yes, we do filter our water. And then I ask, what type? And they, by the way, Alex, I'm a listener. And then, the, and then the owner comes out from behind the counter. That has happened many times when I start asking about stuff. And they go, let me ask the manager. And the manager comes over, oh, Alex Jones, how you doing? Yeah, the owner put filters in a couple years ago. Or the owner comes over. You're like at Hop Dottie's Hamburgers downtown. And they says, fluoride-free water. It's really good filtered water. And you go in there, and there's like a line sometimes down the block. And the guy's a listener. And the owner comes over and goes, yeah, free hamburgers for your crew here. Free hamburgers, Alex. Yeah, I filter it. I mean, this is a culture where we demand quality. We get it. We, we raise the level of the culture, not dumb it down with austerity. The globalists are teaching us to not have good health. They're teaching us not to have freedom. They're teaching us we're bad and ugly and broken and stupid, and we can't have air conditionings and cars, but Obama can how racist is that? In fact, before I do this special report that I'm going to kind of get focused here and do right now, will you also get him saying to Africans in his African visit two years ago, you can't have cars or air conditioning? Because, I mean, you talk about fundamental racism to telling Africans you can't have technology and then killing Gaddafi because he was giving it to Africa and he'd already helped five different countries and, would, and, and actually stabilized those places and had a plan. I'm not going to be dishonest. Gaddafi fought against the West in the 70s and 80s and things and did some things that were bad. He got framed for some stuff, but uh, he really did some good stuff. And I'm really ashamed of the fact that Hillary Clinton had him killed and then bragged about him. Again, the guy, see, the more I think about how racist she is, in her actions, pushing to target blacks for abortion, it, see, it, it's just, it's this, I've got too much proof. I got too much proof. I got too much. And, you know, Louis Farrakhan, I know, is torn by all this. I don't want to just sit here and hate on Louis Farrakhan. That's easy to do. I actually want to try to, you know, see what the guy thinks. And he gets up there and he says, GD, Barack Obama, you killed 
Muammar Gaddafi, who was helping all of Africa. This guy wasn't a dictator with, you know, 200 Lamborghinis like some of those African dictators. He lived in a hut, basically, with a 10-foot wall around him and gave almost all the money directly to the people in infrastructure. Not in, not in dependency, but in real jobs and college and engineering and, and, and women. 60% of their graduates there. And there's pictures of Obama inside Farrakhan studio. And, and some of those folks still support Obama. But I tell you, having dinner with him for three hours, that guy's got a lot of stamina. I was exhausted. It was interesting. You know, I interviewed him for hours, and it's like it's at night, and I'm in there for three hours. I said, sir, I got to go. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I think there were a little insults. I said, I'm sleepy. <laughs> yeah, but those guys are intense. The actual people that run the Nation of Islam. Uh, I went to meet with them to try to work on stopping this race war the globalists are cooking up. And, and, and you know, I know people like, Louis Farrakhan put out conflicting messages, and, and people can say that's flip-flopping. No, it's different perspectives on different events that the media then basically spins and misrepresents. And I do disagree with Louis Farrakhan on some things, but I think Louis Farrakhan has come a long way. And I don't say that in a patronizing way. I've come a long way. You get more informed, you get wiser as you get older. And I learned stuff from Louis Farrakhan watching C-SPAN when I was a teenager. I mean, he was talking about the private Federal Reserve, the New World Order, and I, you know, I, I knew that was true when I was 15 years old. I'm like, wow, who is this guy that's willing to talk about all these things? But a lot of times when you see a special report that we hear on the news, I come in here, I get everything lined up, and I hit it for five, ten minutes. I get in that zone. I get focused. Kind of on radio, I've trained myself just to be kind of laissez-faire and, 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 and totally unscripted, but to really get into the ultra-massive, true racist nature of Hillary Clinton. And when you actually look at the evidence, it makes your head spin. So I'm going to skip this network break coming up, so I have plenty of time. I'm going to focus right now. I'm going to do my best to really get into this. And then I'm going to take this clip, and hopefully we can make it go viral to educate people that are being conned and manipulated out there. So here we go. Hillary Clinton has pulled every dirty trick in the book politically to try to shut down Donald Trump, who, just as Nigel Farage in Europe, is a symbol of populism, a symbol that we don't want to be ruled by foreign multinational corporations and huge TPP secret combines they've set up. This is just a repeat of King George in England ruling over the 13 colonies back in 1775 and the people saying, we are not going to be pushed around anymore. The establishment media has dropped any illusion that they aren't total servants of this corporate elite and this international corporate elite's minion, Hillary Rodham Clinton. A pampered silver spoon technocrat from her days in college, trained by Saul Alinsky, rules for radicals who dedicated his book to Lucifer. CNN even calls her a golden goddess and says that we should worship her. And now, Politico is reporting today. Drudge Report has the story. Hillary plays the Klan card on Trump. We're going to play this clip of her saying he's a racist, and then we're going to go through the clips of where she has said exactly what Trump is now saying. Now, that makes her a hypocrite and a liar and a deceiver, not the racist part. Then we'll get into why she's a racist. But first, let's hear from sick Hillary. Here she is talking about Trump. Is uh, taking a hate movement mainstream. He's brought it into his campaign. Uh, he's bringing it to our communities and our countries. And, you know, someone who's questioned the citizenship of the first African-American president, who has courted uh, white supremacists, who's been sued for housing discrimination against communities of color, who has attacked a judge for his Mexican heritage and promised a mass deportation force, uh, is someone who uh, is, you know, very uh, much peddling bigotry and prejudice and paranoia. I will have uh, more to say about this uh, tomorrow when I give a speech in Reno. Well, let me 
Okay, so th there's another issue here. She calls this a press conference phoning in on CNN. She can't even be on Skype. She can't even be on video. She can't even be seen. Sounds like she's laying down. And then she says, oh, I have had press conferences. It hasn't been 260-something days. I have journalists into my home or my jet. Oh, your little, your little minion friends. You, you call that a press conference. When you get a couple lapdog dog uh, media people, to use Limbaugh's term, in your lap. No, that's not a press conference. You don't control reality. Now, now let's go over this clip piece by piece. The last clip as we uh, document uh, the deception here. Clinton calls Trump racist in this 45-second clip, bringing up that he has been uh, questioned the president's citizenship. Well, I have the Washington Post here in my stack where they admit that Hillary Clinton is where the birther conspiracy first came from. It's true. When she was running against him in 2008. And we looked into it. And it was weird that all his literature said he was born in Kenya. So we said, yeah, well, why do you say that? But now you say you don't. It was a cover for the fact of who his real dad was, Frank Marshall Davis. But that's another issue. But she's, again, everything she says is what she did. Listen to this. We just played the clip. They go on to say the birther movement that she started. Courted a white supremacist. No, he didn't. He, in fact, personally disavowed him to the ends of the earth decades ago before the new controversy, which Clinton did not do towards violent zealots, Sadiq Mateen, who, again, stood for discrimination against communities of color. And it goes on and on and on. A lawsuit that was settled with no admission with doing all of it because the Trump family did not want to rent to welfare recipients who do not otherwise qualify for our apartments in our buildings. Yeah, I mean, you're trying to get a super fancy apartment and you don't have a job and you don't have good credit. And then they try to pass laws saying they're going to give poor welfare recipients nice apartments. And they're saying, sorry, no, isn't going to happen. Again, he attacked a judge for his Mexican heritage. That's the claim she makes. Or he stated that he was not going to get a fair case in a frivolous lawsuit because of a corrupt Democratic judge who also happens to be an actual Hispanic racist organization called La Raza, which embodies the essence of racism. Advocates for a mass deportation force because a nation without borders cannot function, and will be overrun, kind of like Europe is experiencing right now. So those are points just countering each little piece of the 45 seconds that we went over. And I haven't even scratched the surface. Right now I'm just showing you how everything she said there is a deception, a spin, a lie. Now let's get to where she's a hypocrite and has said the things that Donald Trump has said. We've got a bunch of these clips. Some are from 96, some are from 2005, some are from 2008. Let's just start rolling them. Hi, Secretary Clinton. I was um, wondering what you think about um, like securing the Mexican border with some of the illegal immigrants that come in. Just wondering. Well, look, I voted. Uh, uh, numerous times when I was a senator to spend money to build a uh, a barrier to try to prevent um, illegal immigrants from coming in um, and I do think you have to control your borders okay uh, now let's go ahead and play her that was from 2005 let's go ahead and play another Hillary clip Mexico is such an important uh, problem. Mexican government's policies are pushing migration north. There isn't any uh, sensible approach except to do what we need to do simultaneously, you know, secure our borders with technology, personnel, uh, physical barriers if necessary in some places, and we need to have tougher employer sanctions, and we need to try to incentivize Mexico to do Okay, so that is First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton in 1999 on C-SPAN. We've got more of these, but in the interest of time, let's play her husband, then president of the United States, in 1996, addressing Congress. This is from C-SPAN. Here it is. All Americans, not only in the states most heavily affected, but in every place in this country, are rightly disturbed by the large numbers 
of illegal aliens entering our country. The jobs they hold might otherwise be held by citizens or legal immigrants. The public service they use impose burdens on our taxpayers. That's why our administration has moved aggressively to secure our borders more by hiring a record number of new border guards, by deporting twice as many criminal aliens as ever before, by cracking down on illegal hiring, by barring welfare benefits to illegal aliens. In the budget I will present to you, we will try to do more to speed the deportation of illegal aliens who are arrested for crimes, to better identify illegal aliens in the workplace as recommended by the commission headed by former Congresswoman Barbara. Okay, so Politico, the Associated Press, CNN, thousands of media outlets, probably an hour. I mean, there's thousands of articles popping up every few hours calling Donald Trump a racist, deeply racist, connections to white supremacists. And then you read, there, there is no connection. On his own, 20 years ago, and then a decade ago, he would bring up the KKK and say they're terrible and talk bad about David Duke. On his own. It's like I've gone out and protested the KKK more than 10 times because I wanted to, because I knew that feds were running it. Now, that'd be like saying 20 years from now, I'm a supporter of the KKK when I have the proof. I'm not just someone who, who, who says now I don't like them. I didn't like them 20 years ago. Do you understand that? It's the same thing here. And they go, you won't disavow. And he's like, I disavow. In the same press conference. Next question, you won't disavow. He goes, I just disavowed. Five minutes later, you won't disavow. I just disavowed. And that's just like when I've had different guests on the show, and I keep saying, why won't you disavow your racist? And they go, I I'm not. And I go, why don't you disavow? And they go, I just said it. And it gets really obnoxious, and they get really upset because I'm putting them on the spot. Even though they know it's a joke, it's still asking somebody, why are you a you know, child molester? Or why do you beat your wife? Or why do you rob banks? This is what she's doing. But the media is outraged now that Trump has come, come out and called her a bigot, which is actually true. They're like, hell, that's outrageous. A new low. As they're all doing it with no proof, he's got proof, but he's in a new low. So let's go to Hillary. Well, she got asked about this by major papers after it happened. And she said, well, yes, those gangs are predominantly black. And they're super predators. And they need to be made to come to heel. This isn't even the, the total proof of her racism. It's her real actions, and we'll get to that in a moment, because they put the minimum sentencing in, and the reason I was really against this is because, yeah, three, four, five times more time for crack cocaine than powder cocaine, knowing that more wealthy people, no matter what color they are, would use the powder than the crack that was pushed into the neighborhoods. And when was that done? That was done big time through the 80s and the 90s. The Clintons continued it. They ran MENA, Arkansas. I've had the CIA pilots that ran the operation on, like Terry Reed. They were flying C-130s in filled with cocaine. She pushed the drugs. I I've had Freeway Rick Ross on, the real Rick Ross, not the fat rapper. He's broken it down. It is, like, we ought to get Rick Ross on about this, the real deal, and lay out what he thinks of the Clintons. So, so it, it goes on and on. But regardless, minimum sentencing targeting black people, which then puts them in prisons and they come out real criminals. You don't get a five-year education in college or a four-year or an eight-year. You get a 10-year education or five-year education in a prison. And all you have is criminal contacts when you come out. And the criminal culture and the criminal population grows and swallows up the country. Now we're getting into the real racism of the Clintons, but let's play this clip of her, Hillary Clinton, talking about blacks being super predators. They are not just gangs of kids anymore. They are often the kinds of kids that are called super predators. No conscience, no empathy. We can talk about why they ended up that way, but first we have to bring them to heel. And the president has asked the FBI to launch a very concerted effort against gangs everywhere. In addition to that, he has appointed a new drug czar. You probably saw him Tuesday night. He's one of the most distinguished uh, All right. active And then you can military. go pull up the Washington Post articles with the make him heal comments and, and other similar permutations of the speech she was giving in 1996 on the campaign trail. That's just one version of it. Now, continuing, she has now come out saying that Trump is tied to the KKK. I'm going to play this clip. This is her latest salvo. Now we're not even seeing her, though. Now it's phone calls for days. But that's okay. She doesn't go visit the predominantly black folks 
in Louisiana that are swamped. No, no, because it's okay, though, because she sat at the foot of the head of the KKK, Senator Robert Byrd. It's okay to be to say he's your mentor and to go to his funeral and say how much you love him, because he's an actual grand dragon supreme ruler. And I use those terms because that's the little stupid terms and things they use. I mean, you're grand, super, supreme, goblin, pig, warthog, master, whatever, cyclopses. I mean, I'm serious. It's really entertaining. Uh, but let's go back to the baby grand dragon uh, saying that uh, Trump is KKK. Here it is. The reason a lot of Klan members like Donald Trump is because a lot of what he believes, we believe in. Donald Trump would be best for the job. For president. Yeah. I am a farmer and white nationalist. Support Donald Trump. Sending out all the illegals, building a wall, and a moratorium on Islamic immigration. That's very appealing to a lot of ordinary white people. Running against Donald Trump at this point is really treason to your heritage. Will you unequivocally condemn David Duke and say that you don't want his vote or that of other white supremacists? I don't know anything about white supremacists, so I don't know. Trump named Steve Bannon as his new campaign CEO. Mr. Bannon is best known for his controversial Breitbart News, a campaign chair that ran a website that has become a field day for the alt-right, which is racist and all sorts of other ists. The alt-right, which is a sort of dressed up in suits version of the neo-Nazi and white supremacist movements. Okay, so uh, they also have one of these top Clans guys in California endorsing Hillary. These are all just publicity stunts these guys pull. And where'd the Klan come from? The Democratic Party. Hillary Clinton, when they were running for governor, was putting out rebel flag uh, pins to get elected. These people are total sociopaths. And they love modern slavery. They love the drug war. They took out Gaddafi that destabilized Africa. She funds abortion, expanding against black people. I mean, this is crazy. We'll be back. You have to understand, the whole thing in the South, the KKK, all of it, if you actually study history, was probably 80% or so of the South were poor farmers uh, when the colonies were basically set up. And a lot of them came in as indentured servants. You serve a five, seven, eight, or ten-year term, and you could basically be locked up in prison for life uh, if you tried to ever break that contract. And it was one step above full-bore slavery. It was a, a term of servitude, or basically what the Bible would call like a bond slave. Okay. And then the sharecroppers were always basically competing with the plantations. And there was all sorts of friction between that. And then once slavery began to decline and end because of Western expansion, and also because the British had declared it outlawed worldwide and were attacking anybody that was involved in it. And I'm kind of getting into a history lesson here because I was if you just joined us last hour documenting how Hillary Clinton's claims that Trump's connected to the KKK is beyond balderdash when she has all these real connections. But it was a political system to control poor white people and then to organize them into groups that could basically be controlled. And the KKK acted in, in most areas of the South as a gang, uh, really a boss hog good old boys that would run around and go after whoever they wanted. And sometimes they would side with uh, a different town or different area uh, on one issue, and other times they wouldn't. It, it, it was all just basically organized crime is what it turned into. Uh, it did not start as that. It started as basically vigilante groups during Reconstruction in the South that was very oppressive uh, and just incredible atrocities. And that was just one group or organization that developed to resist it. Uh, but by the time Reconstruction ended, oh, the the defense group that was involved in defenses of northern looting that was epic. I mean, that's what armies do. It went on for a, a decade. There were battles in capitals. The Texas Capitol uh, re repeatedly had northern governors that were installed, thrown out. There were cannons firing down Congress. I mean, just miles from where I sit. 
there were huge wars. None of that's in movies. None of that's the... Imagine those would be amazing movies. But you're not allowed to really see the complexity and the flavor of history and really how the more we change, the more we stay the same, and people just act like people. But see, they dumb all of that down, ladies and gentlemen. And Hillary just sits there and says, oh, Donald Trump's with the KKK with no proof, and then edits some video together. And the media is now asking him to disavow it again. He's done it hundreds of times, and they say, you will not disavow. And now, of course, it turned out they were cutting his audio on and off. And he's saying, what? White supremacists? I don't know. That's what Trump does when something blips. You see him, or he'll just, he, he, won't, he won't even say, excuse me, or I didn't hear that. He'll just give some non sequitur, just kind of filler. I mean, I've really learned a lot about Trump. And I've had mainstream media do that to me, too, where they're, I'm on satellite, and they're turning my audio down where I can't hear what they're saying to make me sound stupid and, and make it sound like one of their favorite things. They do this to a lot of people. They'll say, and see, the public would know this because they hadn't been on satellite TV hundreds of times being interviewed. The media will do things like, so who was uh, the Secretary of State at that time of a historian? Or, and what is the name of that bill? They'll fade your audio down. I mean, CNN and MSNBC are crooked, folks. And then you'll go, excuse me, excuse me. They'll go, oh, you don't know, oh. I mean, they play these incredible, dirty tricks, and people have to be aware. The bad guys, the corrupt power structure is against Trump. Now, Trump is a gamble. But voting for them is no gamble at all. It's a sure loser. Well, they're back at it with 74 days left. They are running national TV ads. We aired it last hour saying that Donald Trump is with the KKK and then he's going to bring the KKK in to take over the government. And then for proof, they cut to Stephen Bannon of Breitbart, an investment banker who is about as radical on immigration as Hillary Clinton was in 2008. I mean, we have a bunch of clips. I only played some of them last hour because we ran out of time. We're in 2008 running against Obama. She said, build a border, build a fence, build a wall. We played three clips of that of other times she said it in the last hour. By the way, Mexico has a wall and Mexico has a fence and they give you six months to one year hard labor if you're caught. And by the way, they have to, I'm not defending the fact that they torture people. That was in the one in Guardian, too. Oh, yeah, they torture people that hire immigrants. Uh, all of these uh, trendy kids, college students and others, try to move to Mexico and slack. <laughs> it's in the news that they get them, they throw them in jail, and they tell them, you call your mommy, you call your daddy, and they bail you out for $20,000. In fact, the Mexican cops on record will sit there and see how much money your family's got. Maybe you're going to spend a couple years, but that's not racist. It actually kind of really isn't. They don't care who you are. White, Hispanic, it doesn't matter. They are going to shake you down in many of those areas. And But that's okay, though. That's okay. We're the only country, except for areas in Europe, where they say, come in and everything's free. And we get George Soros emails that have just been leaked the last three weeks, finally starting to hit the news the mainstream news, saying we're bringing in all these immigrants to create an underclass and control them and then use them to politically change the map. They are slave masters that want to manage a permanent underclass. They are cold-blooded racist. And then he goes on to admit, we're going to collapse everything. Th this is just the beginning. And the even... Even though the Jerusalem Post said he's a megalomaniac showing chaos globally who thinks he's the Messiah. Because you can go look it up. George Soros says, I have to keep it secret, but I, I, I've I, thought I was the Messiah since I was a young man. That's like uh, Rupert Murdoch you know, has made bizarre statements, but nothing like that. Or, or Ted Turner has, you know, has said that, you know, again, he wants to go to heaven and punch God in the nose. I mean, these people think they're God. Ray Kurzweil said... I don't believe in God yet. I'm going to become God. Oh, yeah, right. And I'm not even attacking Ray Kurzweil, but I wouldn't get on a ship he was captaining. Not even God could sink this ship, is what the press said on the Titanic's maiden voyage. I mean, I've learned, folks, you don't tempt fate. And shooting your mouth off, Hillary going around going, I came, I saw, Gaddafi died. 
real people that kill folks don't ever talk like that or act like they're very superstitious about it because they've learned some guy brags how tough he is and how good he is at killing people. He gets his head blown off that day. You don't do it. These people are unlucky. And that's the thing. Hillary won't even show up now to press conferences of 260 plus days and now calls phone calls to the media, a press conference, or having a few reporters that are lapdogs into her house. There's that whole controversy we're going to cover this hour with Mr. Rappaport of nomorefakenews.com. But now they're saying he is the KKK. Paul Watson's article is great. It just went up, but it's not even strong enough in the headline. It's Hillary slams KKK Trump, but her friend and mentor was KKK member Robert Byrd. He wasn't a member. He was the Grand Dragon. And then you can go look it up on, on his own bio. He became the head of the KKK nationwide. The, uh, what's the stupid name? Like Supreme Dragon or Hobgoblin of the Claverners of the Snoopy Dolls? Can we look up what the head of the KKK is called? I mean, I've looked it up before. I know he was the head of it. The head of the KKK. Kissing her. Imagine if we had photos of Trump holding hands with uh, Donald Trump. We had Donald Trump holding hands with, what's his name, David Duke. I mean, this is, we had pictures of Donald Trump holding hands with Donald Trump. We had pictures of David Duke holding hands with Donald Trump. This is crazy. This is over the top. This you can't make up. It's just like W, who I was no fan of, kind of fumbled, made some arrogant statements. Great job, Brownie. You know, the head of FEMA being a rube, a boob, whatever you want to call him. Uh, didn't know what he was doing. Oh, I'm sorry. He was exalted Cyclops. No, no, no. That's only at one level. Uh, I've got to, I haven't looked at it in a while. He, he was the head Grand Dragon for a while. Just in general, what is the head of the KKK called? Okay, I, I forget. It's something like, there's two different names that they can give it. When it came time to elect the top official, exalted Cyclops in the local clan. Yeah, that's the local guys, the Cyclops. I knew that. No, no, no. Later, he became the big El Supremo. They tried to keep it secret, and he later got out, supposedly, if, if you believe that. Uh, bottom line, he was a major clan leader. But imagine if we had images of David Dick holding hands with Donald Trump. But we don't have that because it doesn't exist. But this we do, Hillary Clinton kissing Robert Byrd and praising him hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. It's sickening. In fact, oh, we just happen to have video of him praising. Here it is right now. Uh, here is uh, Hillary at a Freudian slip. I said, here we have him praising him. Uh, here we have her praising him. Today, our country has lost a true American original, my friend and mentor, Robert C. Byrd. Senator Byrd was a man of surpassing eloquence and nobility. And I will remember him for many things, but most of all, for a heartfelt comment he made to me in the dark days following the attack on our country on 9-11. My state of New York was reeling, and we were scrambling to provide support and relief. Oh. Think of me as the third senator from New York, he said. And he meant it. Think about this. Thanks to the leader. She is praising a KKK Grand Supreme Exalted One-Eyed Flying Purple People Leader, Grand Dragon Robert Byrd. I'm sorry, I got to make fun of these names because <laughs> they're like that. And talk about ego trips. I don't give my myself CEO of Infowars or director or founder, and, and I'm not knocking people to give themselves titles, but you know, I know people that own like ice cream shops. You know, they got two employees, and they call themselves a the CEO. But imagine calling yourself Grand Supreme Cyclopses. I mean, what the hell is wrong with these people? I'm sorry. Okay, I'm missing the forest for the trees. I'm just digressing into the weirdness. <laughs> but you've got Robert Byrd, one of the leaders of the KKK, and she's in a love fest with him. It's just crazy. It's crazy. But the main reason I wanted to get our guest on is because he's always got really well-researched angles, uh, and, I, and I always find it to be thought-provoking, so he's going to cover the news here with us in the next hour, hold him a little bit in the next hour. John Rappaport, nomorefakenews.com, joins us via Skype. Again, we're a radio show that also simulcasts at television. 
you don't have an affiliate in your area or on cable, you can simply go to Infowars.com forward slash show. And please always share that link with others so they can tune into reality as well. This is an info war. But I wanted to get him on because he wrote a really good article dealing with the fact that the media is looking at this backwards on purpose, making it about did her staff ever do favors you know, for money that was given to the foundation. Of course they did. The whole thing's illegal. They've got secret bank accounts in like 10 different countries. They've got them up in Canada. The whole thing's a giant fraud. Some cases people are giving them hundreds of millions of dollars and then Bill Clinton and, 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 and she get on airplanes and fly to third world countries to give them uranium concessions. This is you put money into her and then she has the State Department give you U.S. policy instead of standing up and following what Congress says and, and what the law is. This is total treason. This is her selling out America. This is what globalism is. This is like third world dictators that sit there and take money, you know, from wealthy corporations or countries to sell their people out. This is her treating us like we're Mexico. But I got to say, Mexico didn't even let foreign nationals come in. Let me pick one that's really been abused by multinationals. Uh, Nigeria. Okay, uh, Argentina. Uh, the, China, when it was under colonialism. We're going to skip a summer break, but last one of the day. This is so incredible. And so we're going to break that down. We're going to look at the racism stuff. Uh, this is really a war right now. A referendum between the forces that are living in the real world and the forces that are living in fantasy land. Because everything they say about Donald Trump is the opposite. Now, let me be clear. I held my nose... 16 months ago and started saying I like Trump more than the others. And then as I got to know more about Trump and research team, I started thinking, oh, this is a good decision, so I'm going to start supporting him openly. And then as I got to know Trump better and I've seen what he's gone through and what he's done, total presidential material. And he really hates the New World Order. He hates seeing us get screwed over. He has a thing about himself being cheated, and, and, and he doesn't like it. So he identifies with the republic. He wants to be the turnaround guy that saves the republic. He wants to be beyond Nigel Farage, and I totally get it. The guy has a big ego. That's good. The guy's a man. He's aggressive. Uh, he is uh, dangerous at some level, like, like any man that world leaders would actually have, have respect for. That means fear. But he is the polar opposite of the weak, sniveling, backstabbing, corrupt, uh, wicked establishment Hillary of decade after decade, and we'd be out there on the streets in Austin and other areas. We play the clubs, and we say to people, well, who are you supporting? And, and they'll say, I'm not supporting Trump. You know, the unemployment, the government, and all the bad things that have gone on, and the establishment. And we'll say to people, we go, but Hillary is part of the establishment. They go, I don't care. I'm for no logic, twisted uh, mindlessness. I mean, the entire power structure, foreign governments, world leaders, every criminal organization you can imagine hates Donald Trump. That's not reverse psychology. They're cheating in the polls. He's not getting any of the big corporate money. If he started getting a bunch of big corporate money, I'd be a little concerned. No, I, it's like he's getting nothing. And then I'm sure that we're seeing history. Don't just think that there's only evil in the world. It's always darkest before the dawn. That's how it works. For every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. This is universal law, people. And so Trump is a manifestation, a figurehead of us, of that energy. That's why when you get near Trump rallies or near Trump, I'm just remembering, I am higher than a, I am, I am electrified right now. Whoa. Oh, my God. This is incredible. This is what freedom feels like. This is what getting the new order off our back in this spiritual blanket of evil. Oh. And let me tell you, no matter what happens to Trump, we're winning. Don't let them spin this if they kill him or steal the election from them. That, oh, you're discredited. Your movement's discredited. They're giving us the fake script to follow. That's not what this is. This is a drowning man battling for the surface and gasping. We may not make it the first time. We may get a lung full of water. All right, John Rappaport is our guest. No more fake news.com. I've thrown out a lot there. We've got a lot of news to cover, a lot of clips. I need to get you on more often because you're so good at jumping around. Moving quick with me, uh, John Rappaport. I've thrown a lot of issues out here. You write about them all eloquently. Do you agree with what I just said about Trump? Let's talk about the energy, the phenomenon. I don't know what you're going to say. I want to hear it. The listeners and viewers do. And where all this is going, 
and then let's go through these issue by issue by issue. But are we not entering the crucible? Are we not entering the true crossroads, a, a, a massive decision in the, in, the, in the future of humanity? Because forget Trump. Isn't he, just like Farage of UKIP and the Brexit, isn't this a referendum against the media and against the establishment, as Trump has said? No question about it, Alex. Uh, it's the people behind Trump, to the side of Trump, in front of Trump, around Trump. It's the populist movement where people are putting their eggs in that basket and saying, okay, look, we don't know necessarily about this guy. We don't know everything about him. We're going to see what happens. But the ideas and the energy are things that we, the people, have been talking about for a long time. Destroying globalism. Jobs leaving in America. Bring them back. Trying to figure out how come all these people are coming into the country and there's no limit on it. No ceiling. And nobody's saying that there's ever going to be a ceiling. And then we get the Issues George Soros like emails that. and it's admitted to make us poor and, and actually divide us and create racism. Sorry, go ahead. Exactly. Yeah, that's the whole idea. And many of us have been seeing this for a long time. OK, so this is an operation. This is a covert op. The idea is to overwhelm the country with so many people coming in for so many different reasons and all claiming that now we are the savior of the world. And so we're going to have six, seven billion people living here because that's what America ought to do. And if they just back off and they don't do it and they refuse anybody coming in for any reason, then we're completely racist. So we see through all that crap. And people have been seeing through it for a long time. And we see through the whole inner city destruction that's happening with globalism. Hey, guess what? All of a sudden, there's no jobs left. There's no work left. All these manufacturing jobs have fled the country because they're allowed to, because they can go to some hellhole in the third world, produce the same goods, export them back here. And all of a sudden, they don't have to pay any tariffs, no taxes, no penalties, no nothing. And that's how the globalist game works. And if there were tariffs, those companies would be destroyed unless they came back here. And so Trump is talking about that. So for me, you know, I'm not a mind reader in the sense that I'm willing to go out and say, I know who this guy is. I know exactly what he really means. And I know exactly what he's going to do, because frankly, I don't. But what I do know is that the energy and the spirit and the ideas behind this whole movement, which really, if you go back, were a lot of the same ideas around Ron Paul, who didn't have the energy and the muscle and the appeal immediately. That's what I'm talking about. That's right. And Trump That's knows this real. and he's punching through the media and they know it. And so regardless of what happens here, this is a war. We have torn the hell out of the New World Order. We exactly. have brought so much more energy in. You can see the next wave of liberty is going to be even bigger. Uh, the New World Order, I, I believe, is bleeding to death right now and is doomed. The problem is, will it drag us down with it in its death throes? And that could take decades. Yeah. And bringing up the media, that's crucial. Because one of the major things that Trump has done is he said, you know, I don't care what you guys are saying. What do I care? You're all crazy. You're all sold out. You're criminals. You don't know what you're talking about. You're dumb. You're idiots. And that's the end of it. And all of a sudden, millions of people in America stand up and say, well, that's what we thought. <laughs> We've been thinking about that for a long time because we watch the news every night and we see how crooked these people are and how stupid and incompetent and how they're sold out and so forth. Now, if he brought nothing to the table except that, if Trump brought nothing except that, that would be a major victory to me. I mean, an incredibly major victory, I'm saying as a reporter, because the whole idea now is people say, well, you know, I don't have to buy what the media is saying. I know they're crooked. I don't care what they say. They can spin their lies forever, and we don't have to believe them. In fact, we'll just reject them out of hand and forget these people because... You know, they're just part of the same establishment that's trying to destroy us. Let we me ask you this, Rappaport. Obviously, they've been cheating on the polls. They admit they've changed the methodology on most sure. of them. Three to 15 points, more Democrats. 
uh, or they add a bunch of independents that they know are really Democrats, or they call the phone lines, people that they, they know are Democrats, and sample them as Republicans. This is all... I can't believe they actually put it in their methodology like it makes it okay, like the Republicans going, well, we changed the rules where we ignore the popular vote, the primary. Well, so what if you change the rules? The election laws say one person, one vote. That's why they had to back off because it is really illegal at the end of the day if they wanted that fight. But 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 now it has swung some people uh, in internal polls I know have been done. Trump is still ahead in some of these battlegrounds, but it's gotten closer because of that hoax that Trump's in trouble. So the self-fulfilling prophecy how do we counter that, and how effective do you think it's been? I think it's been very effective. I think people are waking up about the polls. I mean, I looked on a Reuters page the other day, and I saw two stories, one above the other, that were like two or three days apart. Uh, and the first story said, uh, I think this was Reuters, you know, Trump way down in the polls. And the second story said, pulled even. He pulled even. I mean, you know, you just look at that and you say, these people are lying. They're crazy. CNN does the same thing. All these media outlets, they're scrambling and people are seeing it, that the polls are completely rigged, that they don't make any sense. Uh, what we really have to worry about is Hillary's theft of the election. I mean, outright theft through. And isn't it smart that Trump has put that front and center so people understand? And then they come out and say, we've never heard of this. Obama says, what? what's that? What's election fraud? That's ridiculous. That's the quote. But then they admit the Justice Department's putting five times more monitors out there to make sure illegals can vote. They're there to help the retail yeah, fraud. Right. And the U.N.'s putting ten times the international observers in they've ever done. That's Reuters, you know, by the way. I, I wish you would get uh, Bev Harris on there. We're trying. Um, I haven't been able to really. I've gotten a few quotes from her. But, I mean, blackboxvoting.org, she's deeply investigating this system called GEMS, G-E-M-S. And what she's talking about, this is a software vote tabulating program that is responsible for counting 25% of the votes across America, 25%. And it is embedded in five different voting machine manufacturers, all the ones that people have heard about, Diabold, et cetera, et cetera. And this thing can take a vote, one vote, and it can turn it into 50 votes. You know, you go into the, the booth, you make one vote, and suddenly becomes 50 if the people who are manipulating it want it to be. And they preset the algorithm where it's all preset for exactly the outcome they're going to have. But then to hide it in plain view, when they were still in the primary uh, from Sanders in California, they met the day before with CNN and AP, with the super PAC people and the um, super delegates. And they said, we have decided this is who's going to win. This is the number. They decided, set the number for the next day, let everybody vote, and then announce the winner. But they admitted they did it like it's okay. We admit we met and stole it from Bernie. It's this weirdness where they have the Republicans go on TV and go, we never take your popular vote. We're going we're gonna to decide. See, I mean, it's, it's mind control. It, it, it's a Jedi mind trick, folks. We're we aired that longer intro right there because Governor... Jesse Ventura really wanted to talk to me. And he's usually not like, hey, have Alex call me right away. So I called him right away. And my gosh, for the three-minute break and the three-minute little promo intro, I've never heard him so on fire but focused. Uh, the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals uh, just, uh, just refused with no comment to hear his case. And, and folks, I want to make something clear. I, I admire our soldiers, even if some of these wars are corrupt or bad. And I, and I admire you know, Navy SEALs and folks, and I know a lot of them, and, and Green Berets and, and, and Army Special Forces. Everybody knows that. But I'm against all these wars, and, and I don't like it in the middle of the Chris Kyle, Jesse Ventura thing. But the jury saw the evidence, and the judge ruled in favor. Ventura's not doing this for money. He's not doing this to get money from Chris Kyle's widow, who I've seen on TV, and really great Second Amendment woman, amazing. The truth is, this was some bigger PSYOP. I don't think she was involved. Kyle got executed. I've talked to Navy SEALs. I've talked to v famous operators that, you know, guard world leaders, you name it. It's known he was executed up outside Dallas for some reason. There's something big here. They're really scared of it. National security has come into it. Uh, this is really dangerous stuff for Ventura because the court even violated his own rules. His lawyer is one of the top ones in the country. Ventura's won a lot of lawsuits with him. He says he's never seen anything like this. When Ventura comes on exclusively Monday, 
I got to call him back today to get filled in on more of it. Um, they're, they're hiding something big here. Forget Chris Kyle, forget his wife, all that stuff. And this was done to discredit Ventura so he couldn't run for president later. And regardless of what you think about Ventura, this was a psyop. And then Kyle had to be taken out to cover it up, just like they did with um, other famous military people that were used for PR purposes. It's very, very dangerous. Remember what happened with the uh, football player and everything in Afghanistan. Remember what happened with Private Lynch with that fake story. They killed five members of her team in one week when they started speaking out saying it was fake. Jerry Bruckheimer actually directed it in the field with sat cameras. That's in the London Guardian. That was all made up, fake. I mean, there was a real attack. She cowered. The men were the ones that fought and got you know, killed, and then some got captured. The point is they want to put women in the military in frontline combat. It's all just PRBS. And so I've seen these things with Pat Tillman, you name it, where they kill them. And this is dangerous, 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 dangerous stuff. Um, and I'm very sad for Chris Kyle and his wife, but the big news is... And I'm going to go to our guest, but this is really big. That they were getting up there testifying that, they were, that Ventura was taking money in the lawsuit from her. Even though he spent as much in the lawsuit as he was going to get. And ladies and gentlemen, I just can't even believe it. I, I, I can't believe I live in such a Twilight Zone world. They were all testifying that it was her money, even though they had this $50 million insurance policy that would have covered it, you know, 10 times over. And the federal court overturned it and said they don't want that known. Think about that. They don't want it known. They want to just keep pushing the fraud that Jesse Ventura is suing a widow to get her personal money. All of it bull. And she's made more than... 30 million bucks herself. I, again, I don't want to get into the whole middle of this thing. It's just crazy. Ventura's asking for a couple million dollars when, it, when they just they hurt the guy bad with that made-up story. And that's what Chris Kyle or whoever got for adding that little piece of bull in that book. So I've talked to folks that were there, Navy SEALs and Army people that were that knew Chris Kyle, and they said, no, that movie's pretty accurate. In fact, he probably killed more people than that. And there's other guys in the Army that have killed more than Chris Kyle, by the way. But, uh, and... Again, that's uh, it's, it's a whole other area where the, they've allowed the Navy SEALs to engage in PR propaganda stuff. And there's a reason the Army's never allowed it. It's super dangerous. And you see where all this stuff goes. But I'm going to stop right there because he told me even more. And I, it's, it's like at a certain point, I'm like, people think they want to lead an exciting life. And I always wanted to lead an exciting life. But, man, this is getting a little too exciting because it doesn't stop. It doesn't let up. The crescendo is intensifying. All right, co-hosting with us. That's what he's doing, riding shotgun. Uh, is Mr. Rappaport from nomorefakenews.com. And we're going to uh, go to him uh, here in just a moment. I want to tell the listeners, I want to tell the viewers that we have come out with another amazing supplement at InfoWarsLife.com. And it is our goal, and it is our pledge, and it is our commitment to bring you the highest quality, most bioavailable organic products out there. Selenium is so important to the body. It's a missing link, a missing element that most people are very deficient in. It's how your cells engage in electrochemical activity from the brain to every other cell in the body, but particularly the brain. Reproduction, all of it, it is king. And that's why they keep lowering the amount they say you need. Just like they tell you you don't need iodine, even though you'll die without it. The feds used to put it in the salt, folks. It raised IQ points 15%. And this goes with the X2 from InfoWarsLife.com like a horse and carriage. InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. 888 253 I think we got like 26 nutraceuticals now, and some of them are very proprietary and very complex uh, game changers. Others are just the best of absolute staples. That's what it comes down to, and I am so honored to be working with Dr. Grip and other top developers to bring you everything from the most bioavailable, Vitamin B12, methylcobalamin, secret 12 to the lung cleanse to all of it. Okay, uh, Mr. Rappaport, uh, again, I want to go into analysis with you. We've talked about the state of the world, where we are, what's happening in the courts, uh, what's happening in the media, this huge consolidation. Hillary openly fundraising with emails saying we're going to shut down the independent press when I get in, that they don't have a right to exist. These are unprecedented statements that Drudge warned of 
last year. What would you call the climate in the world right now, geopolitically, where the world is? Why are the elites so naked, so brazen right now? And then let's go through her health records. Let's go through uh, the foundation. Let's go through the other big issues you've been writing about so uh, eloquently at nomorefakenews.com. John Rappaport. We're seeing the extreme polarization, which has been coming for a long time. Freedom versus slavery, basically, is what it is. Individual freedom. Does a person exist as an individual? This is something I write about forever. I mean, there are sociologists out there, Alex, and you can, and I've quoted them before, that say basically the individual is some kind of an extinct concept that never really existed. I mean, these people are just infesting uh, universities and uh, journals, their agents, their covert agents. And they're trying to destroy freedom, and the very basis goes back to the individual. That's what they're after. The group is everything. What group do you belong to? You've got to find your group, and it's got to have a special need, and you've got to be a victim, and you've got to be talking about what other people are doing to you. Uh, that's your only ticket in this world now. That's all you can do. Join up, find the right group, find their language, find their words parrot their stories. You're a member of a group. You don't really exist independently. When in fact, of course, the Republic was all about that. The Republic existed to limit government right from the beginning. We know that this is where the seed of corruption starts. So we're going to limit what they can do. That was overturned, you know, gradually uh, a few hours after the, the ink was dry in the documents, but the ideas are there. And now what we're dealing with is polarization. And again, to get back to Trump, what he represents, whether you believe it uh, as a real person or as a symbol or whatever, is a coalescing around that campaign of people who are saying, wait a minute, this is not a world of I've got to save everybody in the world and this is my mission in life because somebody taught me that in a university and I have no life or existence of my own. That's complete crap. I'm not going for that. That's PR. That's, an, that's a PSYOP. That's the way they drag you in. That's the way they say, well, look, everybody in the world has to be saved. And we, your leaders, are the Jesus Christ who are going to do this. And we need you to help us. And if you don't, you're a corrupt criminal, terrorist, outsider, threat, et cetera, et cetera. So this cetera. is total mind control. This is giving Absolutely. up your identity and becoming a slave. Uh, and, and, and your profession is how to be a disempowered crybaby. That's right. That's your profession. So here come all the uh, violent protests and so forth in the United States against police violence, which, of course, does exist. But the thing about these protests and the violence and so forth is that they are a smokescreen. They're pretending this is what's wrong with the inner cities in America. This is the real problem, is police violence. If we could solve this somehow, everything else would go away. That's total bullshit. What's actually happening in inner cities for a long time, $2 trillion, perhaps more, since 1966 on the war on poverty. Where has it gone? What has it done? Things are worse now than they've ever been before. It's been cities. weaponized to make them disenfranchised. As a beta test, and now it's being moved everywhere globally, absolutely, a dastardly total plan to ship the jobs out and then scapegoat the cops that you throw in in a rear guard action as the civilization collapses. Exactly. And then, of course, if you want to talk about Second Amendment and guns, and let's say you had somebody sane in the White House, the first thing they would do is they would stand up with a global press conference and they would have a big board and they would say, you know what I'm going to do to curb gun violence? I'm going to show you where most of it is happening and who's doing it. I mean, wouldn't you think that's a plan? If you want to eliminate gun violence, let's find out where it's happening. So it's here. It's in this city. It's in that city. Here we go, folks. And who are the people that are doing most of it? Well, we call them, what's that word again? Uh, mm, gang. That's right. We forgot all about that. How many times has Obama or Bush or even Clinton talked about that word in depth? Never. What's going on there? Well, they're part of the drug 
cartel operation. We can't disturb that because, I mean, they're distributing heroin and cocaine and so forth all over the country for the Mexican cartels and other cartels. Ooh, we better not. But that's where the violence is happening. And that's the real total racism with the Democrats, Republicans involved as well, but they're the real quarterbacks in all those Democrat-controlled cities with Bill Clinton and Mena, Arkansas, bringing the cocaine in on record to bring it in and then have minimum sentencing when the black people use it. I mean, wow, she really wow. did sit at the feet of Grand Dragon Commander. You bet. So they're destroying the inner cities, and then they're coming out and saying, okay, you can see from our protests that the real problem, the only problem, is cop violence in the inner cities. <laughs> Come on, man. You know, I mean, I could go on, you know, for hours about this. This is all a smokescreen. Nobody in, in any administration in the White House since... Lyndon Johnson, certainly, and before, ever wanted to really solve the problem of what's going on in inner cities. It's all a psyop. It's all meant to destroy inner cities, to create chaos, to create this bigger vortex that will suck everybody in the country down into it through guilt, shame, uh, new laws. And now under Agenda 21, the they are going to force everyone to move into the compact cities or move poverty into little central cities with little skyscrapers right in the middle of small towns, like a t invasion to then bring that scourge there. They admit this plan. Exactly. It's like, okay, this is what we're going to do, folks. Uh, and you can't say anything about it because if you do, then you're a racist. Racism has nothing to do with this. This is a psyop, a covert op, the destruction of populations, the destruction of areas, bringing chaos to the entire country with the idea of destroying the, the entire country and erecting on it that little clip of Elder George Bush, a new world order. That's the whole point. And now That's we have all done. the emails and more coming where it's from George Soros and Hillary and everybody sending people dressed like Bernie supporters to attack Trump, to blame Trump and Sanders, her co-enemies. Uh, sending in the radical Muslims to bring down Europe and admitting it's a destabilization program. We have the smoking guns. It's absolutely there. And then in one of the, has to be the strangest presidential season that I've ever seen, and I'm 78 years old. Here you had, no matter what you think of him, forget that for the moment. On one side, you have this guy named Bernie Sanders. Over here, you have this guy, Trump. Now, you listen to them talking about globalism and the effects, and... Basically, you're hearing the same story from both of them, but they both hate each other and they can't stand each other. And they're standing on the extremes talking about globalism. And here comes up the highway center stripe in a big limo, the biggest globalist in America, Hillary Clinton, hoping to drive her way into the White House. Absolutely. Plastic stay there. John drive. Rappaport, a total genius. When I was sitting here during the break. Is forever. I was thinking about a couple things. And one of them is, I'm saying this is a foreign globalist takeover, and Hillary and the Pope and all of these other world leaders are saying it's a world takeover as well. But they say, we're liberal, so we need a liberal world government that's going to give free stuff to the third world. They've been exploiting the whole time. I mean, these are the exploiters. You can say we passively do it as well by supporting you know, things that aren't free trade, fair trade, uh, you know, research trade, compassionate trade. And I'm all about actually paying people more in the third world so it doesn't suck us down as well and builds them up. That's how you help people is actually equitably building real things, not just exploiting them. But that's Henry Ford, a bad guy in some ways, but he said, I want to be able to have my employees buy the car. I actually want to build an economy. The globalists are having a system where they're ending the economy, where they tell Africa, you can't have cars, you can't have this stuff. But I saw a John Bound uh, report this morning. He, he filed for InfoWars. And he was saying being anti-Trump is treason or, or being a anti-Trump protester is basically treason. I thought, is that too strong? But then I started thinking about it. If people were working, say, for the Chinese or the Russians in mass, and they were trying to block roads and overthrow things and stop a presidential candidate, that would be foreign interference. And if a citizen did it, it would be treason. Well, th 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 these are globalist systems that are doing this. This is world government. And so it really is treason. And then they've used our open system to come in, turn our citizens against us, and actually become operatives. John Rappaport, please continue. It is. 
It's a global operation. It's a globalist operation. It comes from all over the world. I mean, you cover Bilderberg more than anybody else. What are these guys doing sitting in castles and hotels and so forth from all over the world? Big shots, heavy hitters, bankers and so forth. They're planning the future. And in this future, people are slaves. That's the way it is. They don't want freedom. You think they're sitting around saying, you know, we want to liberate the individual. This is the most important thing in the world, boys. I mean, let's face it. We're all individuals. And so what we really want to do is liberate the individual all over the world. Yeah, sure, that's what they're doing. Why are they all sitting there and meeting in the first place? Because they're planning the future. I mean, this concept in itself is destructive. We're going to plan the future of the planet. Really? Well, who are you? 10 billion people, all this giant globe, you're the one who, you're planning the future. Wow. Where do you get that idea from? Well, the idea we get is that the individual human being is a biological machine that's out of control and is misprogrammed and we have to reprogram him and that's what we're doing. So shut up and let it happen because that's where science is really going and that's what we're doing and this is the future. That's really the basis of the whole thing. And that's the globalist admitted statement at the mid-level, not for proletariat consumption, but at the higher level, it's to poison us, kill us, phase us out. And we see under their management, they are directly dumbing us down and poisoning us. Yes. And they also seem to believe that, uh, well, a robot can do your job better than you can. And the robot will always follow directions, so what do we need you for? They're psychopaths. They're saying we don't have a right to exist. Exactly. It's the system that they're interested in. And I've been writing about this for years. People who are obsessed by systems, watch out. When a person is obsessed, okay, we have to impose this system and that system, and then that system is under this even bigger system, and that will save us all. That person is a psycho. That person is... A That's right. It's the number one hallmark. Look at Hitler, how he loved all the marching parades and all that. And, I mean, that's what they're into. They're into black Absolutely. uniforms. They're into rallies at night with fire. They're into pyramids where children are sacrificed. It's always the same spirit. We'll be back. Stay with us. You know, I think John Rappaport, of all of our amazing guests that are talented in different ways, is the smoothest, most concise person laying out the globalist true intentions from their own admissions that's why i turn into a stuttering stammering mess not because i don't have stuff to stay or i'm enduring the headlights i'm just like blah, 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 blah. there's all these documents there's all this proof these people are bad news and they talk about how the future doesn't need us and even bill joy i've been talking about this for 16 years he writes a big cover story for wired magazine co-owner of sun microsystems i think it was worth four billion at the time it's like 10 billion now he says, yeah, I'll go to these big conferences and we've decided to kill everybody. And I, I think the public should be warned. So some of these guys have a heart and they're like trying to warn us, but the general public's already been so dumbed down. There is an awakening happening. In the five minutes we have left, John Rappaport, I appreciate your time. Uh, other things you'd like to talk about, uh, the, you know, your articles, a couple little factoids on that with the foundation, how they're trying to spin that, where you see all this going, Hillary's health. What are your uh, observations? Well, as far as the foundation is concerned, the latest article that I wrote about Hillary is that the media has it backwards. Look, the Secretary of State is a side gig. Get that straight, okay? She is one of the officers of the Clinton Foundation. It's not that as Secretary of State, she's found accidentally or incidentally ways to enrich the foundation through these pay for play schemes and donations and all of that. No, the secretary of state job is a branch office of the Clinton foundation. That's where she lives. And this was a great gig to get a real prize because it allowed her to expand, expand the foundation to bring in billions of dollars, money, 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 crime, 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 crime. The Clintons can't resist it. They always do it. And that's the whole thing. The media are talking about it backwards. She is the Clinton Foundation. Secretary of State is a side gig that she managed to worm out of Obama for herself to enable her to enrich her family. It's mafia time. It's all about the family, folks. That's what she's been doing.
that's the way it goes. And as far as their health goes, I, I mean, you've read all the stories, you've seen all the videos, I don't want to add to that. I just want to double down on one drug, Coumadin, also known as Warfarin, which he is on long term. That drug is rat poison. So Hillary Clinton and is on rat poison. It is on rat poison. Long term, liver damage. People are not supposed to fly in planes when they're on that drug long term because it can lead to more blood clots, which is the reason she was put on that drug in the first place. So you're talking about even that alone, just that. Don't work at a very high stress job. If you've had blood clots and you're on Coumadin, sure, uh, you know, and, sure. and that's a fact. And now we have our emails where she wanted Parkinson's medication. I mean, it's pretty clear she's degrading quickly. Also, remember the Commerce Department. The Clintons used that when they were in office to run scams. But the State Department's 20 times bigger. I think the deal was made at Bilderberg when her and Obama met in 2008, and she decided to you know get out of the race was that she'd be co-president. And if you really look at it, she's been running foreign policy. She's been stealing billions. She's been co-president, I think. I think, I mean, Hillary's been in office a long time. Long time. And Doug Band, who is a longtime Clinton associate, has raised or gotten pledges for $69 billion for the Clinton Global Initiative, wow. which is another spinoff. $69 billion. What did I do the other day? Let me rip this piece of paper out of here. If you add up the spending, the government spending of Iowa, Kansas, Minnesota, and Missouri, you know, uh, for 2015, it does not total 69 billion. Where, you know, whose money is that? Where does that go? That is an incredible black hole. Yeah, we've pay. already had a female president. I mean, they admit she ran things more than Bill Clinton. So this will be her one, two, three, four, fifth term fifth as president term if she gets reelected uh, through fraud. John Rappaport, nomorefakenews.com. Your books are amazing, available there on the site. We'll talk to you next week. God bless you. It's a deal. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. You know, I've talked a lot about the Clintons and their corruption, but I was just thinking during the break and doing some research with the crew, and it, it hit me that it's even worse than I've been saying. Because I was reminded by the investigative journalist, John Rappaport, who just left us, if you just tuned in, that the global, the Clinton Global Initiative, that is a whole separate charity system, the Clintons have raised $69 billion, and then they direct where that money goes, and it's been reported that 97% of her charitable giving goes to her. And then upwards of half the money get spent on jets, hotels, clothing, you name it. It's crazy. So these people basically don't pay taxes, just like Bill and Melinda Gates have put in hundreds of billions of dollars of money into the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Warren Buffett's a partner in that. And then they get richer and richer and richer because it's tax exempt. This is crazy, and it's all about power. It's all about control. And then here comes this, you know, upstart to them, Donald Trump, who's never played ball in the system the way they want him to. And he's exposing the hat trick. He's exposing that there's not really a rabbit materializing inside the hat, that when the magician puts the black hat on top of the table, that there's an open trap door inside, and he's pulling the bunny rabbit up through it, closing the trap door. There's a little trap door on the top of the hat, and then he pulls out the rabbit. And children, when they're three or four years old, will say you're wrong, you're lying. Unless you can get a magician to turn the table around and show you that there's a rabbit in a cage inside of it. On the back. And that's what these people are doing. And, and look, folks come back at me and they go, oh, it's all corrupt, it'll never change. Yeah, you know, Trump, I'm sure he'll be just as bad. His history isn't doing stuff like this. Donald Trump wouldn't steal the entire place set of China, the first China bought by the United States government for George Washington's first White House. The first executive order is for that China to have the French ambassador and the British ambassador later come to dinner. That's famous, worth millions. They stole it. They'll steal anything nailed down. They don't care. They're hardcore 
criminals and they think you and I are stupid and they're light years. They are eons past Donald Trump. There has been a magnifying glass down his throat, up his wazoo, all over him and his family, and they can't dig anything up. They've put out incredible lies. Hillary, the problem is there's too much corruption. I try to sit there sometimes to shoot a special report and pull up all her crimes and things she's done, and I get dizzy. So I've got a good brain. I've got a good memory. And I just it just starts hitting me. Bam, 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 bam. Let's let's put the Clinton Global Initiative up on screen for TV viewers, for radio listeners, I'll narrate. Where they talk about to date, it's raised sixty billion dollars. And I was in there during the break. It's on the back computer. I had it pulled up over there. And we're gonna highlight it and come in and show it on air. There it is. Douglas J. Band that heads it up. With Taneo Holdings, he says, Mr. Band served as President Clinton's chief advisor from 2002-2012, advising him as the counselor of the president and was the key architect of the Clinton's post-presidency. He created and built the Clinton Global Initiative, which today has raised $69 billion. And then it goes on, organizing not just other people, but governments, kids doing food drives, all of it sucking in and then it just goes into these black holes in secret bank accounts all over the world, and they won't release any of the info. Oh, but Donald Trump won't release his tax returns. And my only issue with Donald is, he just goes, no, I'm not releasing them right now. Nah, it's private. I don't have to. I would say, I'll release it when she releases her main bank account records for her foundation in Canada and in Luxembourg and in Geneva, Switzerland, because that's where they're based. They... They have the classic secret bank accounts, admittedly, and run these things through them. I mean, I go in at Christmas and say, because people seem to like cash more than checks. They, they seem to realize you're giving them a lot of money. And I'll say, I want $20,000. I'm going to give people cash bonuses, cash gifts, you know, family, friends, you name it. Give somebody a gift card for 100 bucks or like, eh, whatever. Give them 100 bucks in cash. Like, wow. So you know, I, I like to promote cash, so I do that. And they'll go, excuse us, Mr. Jones. And the bank manager will come out, even though it's a local bank. And they'll go, this is a lot of money. And I'm like, really? Millions and millions of dollars comes through to run my operation and goes out every, every quarter to pay the bills and stuff. I, I buy millions of dollars worth of product that goes through these banks. What do you mean? $20,000 is nothing. Well, I'm going to have to fill out a suspicious transaction report. Oh, oh, well, go ahead and do it then. Big deal. See, oh, I can't get $20,000. And then I've done events and things, say, where we raised ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 signing books and DVDs when I would do some conference. I didn't even you know, pay for the hotel conference, just, you know, just that sale. But I don't want to be going around $15,000 on me, so I go over to the bank and I go in. And I say, I want to have this turned into a money order. Or I want to have this turned into a cashier's check. Or I want to have this wired to my bank. And then they count the money up. And then the bank manager comes up. May I speak to you, please, sir? And I'm sitting there in sports jacket. Nice guy. No criminal record. They've got my driver's license. Sure. Um, where'd this money come from? Oh, well, just Google me. I'm Alex Jones. I just had a conference you know, next door at the Sheridan. I, I just want to get this in the, in the bank. I, I need it to pay for the event. And, and, you know, it just makes you not even have the events anymore. You know what I mean? Just because you have to monkey jack with all this stuff. But the Clintons, hey, $69 billion. We ain't telling you where it went. <laughs> you know, $10 billion in their foundation. They just do whatever they want. They steal George Washington's dinner sets. They are the filthiest white trash scum the planet's ever seen. And she's an ugly, degenerate, filthy, murderous piece of filth. And they got all these little stinking collaborators because they got their little, you know, their little trendy beards and trendy hair and a pink sock and a green sock and little pink shirts at, at Media Matters. I've seen them do interviews and they, they do interviews about the mean Alex Jones. We're tattling on him. You think working for worldwide murder kingpins is, is okay because you've got the same hairstyle as the guy in The Hangover? You work for people as bad as the Nazis. I know, though, you think you work for the winners, so you don't give a good damn, do you? And that's why 
God is going to rub you out. But very slowly, I don't hate you. But you're like piles of dog manure. I've got to move out of my way. And I just think of the traitorousness of you, of people in general that know they're working for a criminal enterprise, that know they work for George Soros, who admits he wants to overthrow countries and destabilize things to loot them and rob them. But you think it's funny and you think it's cute. But even mainline newspapers now have the headlines because the evil's gotten so bad, the truth's coming out. George Soros sows chaos globally. He's a megalomaniac. And then you go read interviews with him and he sits there and goes, I had to keep it secret. I would have been locked up in a mental institution, but I knew I was a messiah. I guess the devil's messiah. You're here to save the devil's project with, with a, a, a toddling crone who can't even see five feet in front of her. I'm not even people visually impaired. I'm just saying the image of this scrabbling, rat-like, uh, uh, the opposite of virile demon creature that treats all of her crew like filth, doesn't give tips, revels in chewing out hotel maids, hates young people, hates good-looking people, just is an abomination. And then Kit Daniels has this story on Infowars.com that no one else has. And I say that as a bad thing. Usually people love it when we have the exclusive, we have the exclusive. No, I, I don't want to have the exclusive. I don't want to have to sit here and go up against this kingpin and say all these things about her and be on their radar. You know what you see on Media Matters and these other platforms is what the White House and the Clintons want. That's in the emails. They, they direct the talking points. So, you know, we, we, I have Sauron looking at me, but I'm not afraid of her because I'm afraid of losing my soul because I got one. I'm afraid of being like you, Hillary. I'm afraid of whatever that cold, horrible place is you're in. God, I'm so alive. I feel so good. I'm, so, I'm honorable. I'm strong. Thank God I'm not like you people. And I don't say that meanly. But, oh, my God, it's horrible to even look at you and look at your spirit. I can see you. And it is. Very, very sad. Very, very sad. I got some chills right there, but not the good ones. Just thinking about her, what it must be like. Oh, my God. They say psychopaths and people are just the most tortured folks you can imagine. Their dreams, you name it. I mean, it's just they are. They are. She, she's, a, she's a slave. She, she's possessed. She is not her. She, she is a, 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 a vessel of wickedness. Corruption. Did Hillary just manipulate stock prices using Twitter? Unusual stock market activity only hours before Hillary causes biotech collapse. Hmm. Would Hillary be involved in something like that? Hmm. Hillary Clinton's recent tweet attacking biotech firms lowered their stock significantly. I'm sure that'll be a big buying time. But not before an insider made a 2,900% profit from predicting biotech stocks would collapse. Hmm. No, 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 no. These people would... Powerful public policy control. They never insider trade. And as I always say, fish never breathe with their gills either. We'll be back. Stay with us. All right, let me get more into the Clinton Foundation. Then other breaking news. Uh, Joe Biggs was out there two days ago at the Trump rally. Uh, we had uh, one of our other reporters in yesterday, our newest edition, but uh, amazing footage uh, that the crew got and that uh, Biggs got of the communist uh, and others, some, some really over-the-top stuff coming up in the next segment uh, when Joe Biggs co-host with me uh, a, a little bit in the next hour. But I can't go too far because I have a dentist appointment and i got to come back to work uh, after that. But you, you, if you're a radio listener, you're actually spared a lot of stuff. People say this show is actually better radio-wise because you don't have to look at Hillary Clinton and look at people like Robbie Mook. Now, a Mook in, in popular nomenclature or vernacular would be the proper word means a leech an incompetent person that thinks they're smart it's incredible i'm not making fun of his last name i'm, I'm sure it's some you know anglicized you know cooler name before but has been chopped down to mook mook is another one of these cheshire cat grin it's actually a you know what 
eating grin, a Bravo Sierra grin, and he's up there talking about how wonderful the Clinton Foundation is and all this other stuff. And even Dana Bash is admitting it's clearly pay to play. I mean, it's in the emails. Okay, I'll give you this million dollars, but I need to get this done. Okay, we'll set the meeting up immediately. And it's a State Department employee working illegally at the foundation. Uh, lock her up already, okay? But it doesn't matter. We've got another Ivy Leaguer who thinks he's God, and they all try to walk around and act more arrogant than the next person. You couldn't pay me to be around all these wannabe elite slobs. They're scared. They're stupid. All they've got is their Porsche and their tennis racket and their dumbasses, and they're horrible, and you can't trust them, and you can't do business with them. I mean, they're just, just as, and, and look, I'm not making fun of you if you like a Porsche and play tennis. I'm not making fun of you if you have a beard like the guy in The Hangover. Your beard's cool. It's that they are making it uncool. This guy with his little <laughs> psycho face that everybody thinks is so successful and so manly. No, that's not manly, scumbag. Walking around showing us how arrogant you are and how <laughs> I'm really arrogant. I'm really powerful. I'm really confident. Hey, ladies. Hi. Oh, hi, ladies. Oh. And you always see them with the same type of woman, you know, another social climber. They're never really good looking, but they think they are. And they're all real scared and act confident. Get out of my planet, people. Oh, what a mook. Let's go to mook. A new batch of State Department emails were released last week it. showing Doug Band, a counselor to He's the Clinton moving. Foundation, it's asking rubber mask. Clinton advisors Huma Abedin and Cheryl Mills, oh, who man, were both State Department to... employees mm. at the time, for it's a, teeth. quote, favor. Mm. Uh, and he mm. forwarded an email from a Clinton Foundation donor and told them it was important to take care of the request. You and Huma the wrote the back, and here's what she said. We have all, we've all had him on our Look radar. Personnel has been sending him options. Is this the kind of backscratching that has Americans just turned off and done with you know people who have been from? in Washington a long time? From beauty pageants. Well, first of all, Dana, the, the they tell emailing smile all the time. No, I only smile when I feel like it. From his private email They're not supposed to run around smiling all the time. Or, this is what a man, a man looks like this. Email account. It, it was not related At rest. to the foundation. Let me show you how, okay? That's a normal behavior. I don't I don't make that face on purpose. That's what a face looks like. Every step. Uh, See it? Following all not the appropriate it. protocols. This was someone who had a relationship with the Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a predator. <laughs> Only time you walk around smiling like that's when you're committing crime. Uh, Robbie, mm, I hate you. Sorry. Not so much where the email I can't look at that from, guy. It's mm -hmm. the request in general and, and who the request is going to, right? Well, again, this is someone who had a long-standing relationship with the Clintons. Again, this is someone Clintons, foppish um, like me, a wanted to, uh, shallow dumbass that reads off matter, talking points, um, and an unreal piece of staff, filth uh, diseasing the planet. Sorts of communication, but there was there was uh, no quid pro quo or anything like that here. And as I said, uh, the as email I said, was originated as I said, from I'm a butt kisser. private office. As I said, I crawled out of a possum's rear end. Okay, I'm sorry. We have another clip, though, uh, dealing with the whole Clinton Foundation. Here it is. Go ahead and play. It's important to remember, Anderson, the foundation is a charity. Neither my husband nor I have ever drawn a salary from it. <laughs> you know more about the foundation than you know about right, Let's stop right there. The name of this video is Hillary put up with the Democrats owns Cooper. Oh, she owned the admitted CIA officer involved in PSYOP, Division Command? Oh, oh, how'd I know? Oh, 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 his, his title's been released. Oh, oh, more leaks coming. And you sit there and shovel that at us in that staged event because you can't even do a press conference now. You got to talk over the telephone all day long. And then you act like you just defeated him in a straw man fight where you beat up an imaginary windmill. And then it gets worse than that from that point on. She's never taken a salary. No, no, no. It just pays for the jet aircraft and the buildings and all the crew and all your families and Chelsea getting six million from it and a ten million and a half dollar condo and all the helicopters and the caviar and all the other crap. But none of that money will gloss over the fact that you're a big old fat pig with God shoving an apple in your mouth, getting ready to put you in the political and spiritual oven. John Ronson, who writes for The Guardian, New York Times, you name it. But I've known him forever. That's why I did the interview. And he was uh, he's saying, yeah, no, I really felt the energy in Cleveland like Trump was unstoppable. Populism, you know, the Brexit had just passed, Nigel Farage, Antonio order. But now I feel like the polls are against Trump and it's all dissipating. 
And I said, that's because you tune into mainstream media. That's not what's happening in the real world. They just need to create enough of a hoax so they can steal the election and make it look like Trump lost and keep all these arrested development people like children to go, gay nanny, boo-boo, you're for Trump the racist. And I'm, I'm driving around Austin and I see stores everywhere, you know, selling, I mean, I mean, all over the place selling, you know, Trump pinatas. But you got 100 people out there protesting uh, against Trump and 20 plus thousand in there. Tens of thousands got turned away. We've got B-roll of all this. It's up on Infowars.com. I mean, it's massive. Joe Biggs, you were there. How many people do, got turned away? I don't think I've ever seen a traffic jam two and a half miles back where you guys had to get out of the cars and walk in. I mean, this was crazy. Well, I got there. Me and Michael Zimmerman were the first ones there that day. We got there around 1, 1 30 in the afternoon. And there was already a line wrapped around the exposition, uh, exposition center where they do the road. And he wasn't going to speak until 7.30. Yeah, until 7.30. There was a guy that was waiting in line, told me that they got there at 3 in the morning, waited outside of the gate, outside of the exposition center, and then waited in line as they kept opening up the fences throughout that area so they could get closer and closer and be in front of the line. I mean, that, that's crazy. You don't see that at Hillary Clinton. And, and let's understand, two and a half miles away by the time Dew got there, hours before it stopped, they had to get out and walk in. Yeah, they had to walk. At the end of the road where you come out of the exposition center, there's this long road that goes about two miles to the left and two miles to the right, the straightaway, and was lined with cars on both sides parked. Tons of... That's a major highway. Yeah. I mean, it's out in the middle of nowhere, too. That's where we do concerts at, the rodeo. I, I uh, A buddy of mine took one of those panoramic photos. I put it up on Twitter from the inside. Yeah, we know this place well because we're out there all the time. I take my kids to see monster trucks, you name it. I mean, I've been, I've, I've been in that facility 70 times. Willie Nelson, you name it. I mean, I, I went in with the mindset, all right, we're in liberal Austin. There's not going to be that many people here. And when I got there, my mind was just completely blown to see that many people in an area that's so liberal, people coming from all over, you know. But it's not. I've been there at the elections and the state admitted we discovered fraud was all over the newspapers, and they said, we're still certifying the election. It's not Democrat. Until now, it's the invasion port from the failed California op. They blow that. Now they're going to exploit the next sector. You know, there was a video we posted, I believe it was yesterday, where they had this uh, Trump impersonator guy that was on in the video, and he's walking around, and this guy's, like, talking to him, interviewing him. And he said, you know, do you get any uh, backlash from coming out and being Trump and, you know, and speaking? And he goes, no. He goes, everyone comes up to me. They all want a picture. They all say they love Trump. He said, whatever you see on TV is a complete and total lie. It's BS. But there are the 100 or so or 200, sometimes 500 when Hillary buses them in, which we said from our sources now all confirmed, not Sanders people dressed up to, uh, like Sanders to make his people look bad and make Trump look bad. She divide and conquer, folks. She's playing both ends, you know, to take them down. And we, there were slash tires. There were some people attacked. And as usual, it was the anti-Trump people doing it. It was like when I went to the uh, Trump rally in Dallas, when I was sitting out there in the middle of the protest, and the police officer came up to me, admitted that these guys had been bust in. We have video. They pushed us over or whatever, pushed us out of the way. Like, all right, you guys get out of the way. We want to get these agitators out of here so they can catch their bus and get back out of here. You know, this time it was a smaller amount of people, 70 to 100 people, but they lived in this little neighborhood that was right across the street. There was hardly anyone else that came from downtown Austin, from the liberal trendy area, from the surrounding areas. It was just the people who live in... Now, now in, in fairness, mainline brainwashed liberals are the laziest people on earth. Oh, yeah. So, the, I mean, there there are hordes of them that don't like Trump. Well, they were, down, they were downtown dressed up like clowns, acting like clowns. 15 and 18-year-old and, and women running around with communist outfits on, did, but didn't even know what planet they were on. Did you notice? They're like, we hate Alex Jones, Alex Jones. They go, who? And they, but they didn't even know who I was. They were told to say that. And they hate capitalism. Meanwhile, they're live streaming you from their iPhone wearing their brand new Nikes. And <laughs> we like, ought to ship their butt to, to, I'm telling you, North Korea, man. You know, I almost had a headline change this morning. I rarely do that, but I don't like to be inaccurate. And, and I was watching a John Bowne report. It was a really good report. It's uh, Trump protesters mm -hmm. are, are traitors. And I went, you know, this really is a foreign global takeover. These people really are destroying the sovereignty of the country. These people really are American haters. They really are, should be deported to the country of their choice. Just if you want socialist utopias, go to Venezuela right now where it's war in the streets or go to another socialist country. How about how about North Korea? I mean, seriously, get your ass out, man. We should definitely start one of those White House petitions to send these people to North Korea, all these communists who love it and talk about it. And then when you actually question them, they don't even know what the hell it is. They go, Mao is who we want. Mao, the biggest mass murderer on Earth. Uh, the Hillary Clinton lookalike. <laughs> she does wear weird Communist Party outfits. Now, I want to get to some of these clips. Before we do that, though, 
uh, that you got to start taking this. The, the, Joe, selenium is one of the biggest trace, uh, you know, element minerals out there that people are lacking. The amount of energy you get electrochemically from selenium is life or death. Uh, I mean, when you've got enough selenium, it's amazing. Read the study for yourself. If you don't have enough selenium, if you're a male, it will take it from your brain that has to have it and give it to your testicles because your body says that, you know, that's first, which I kind of agree with, you know, yeah. God designed things correctly. Uh, <laughs> anyways, the point is, if there's a literal correlation while they tell boxers and people, you know, don't have sex for a few months for your fight because, yeah. you know, the selenium issues. But uh, I, I could go on for hours. The point is just try it for yourself. You can't lose. It's 1995. You're supporting the broadcast. It goes with X2. The two things work together synergistically. So does vitamin C. Uh, that's readily available, so we're not selling that. Uh, obviously, in bioavailable forms like orange peel and things like that. But you really need to get uh, BioTrue Selenium, ladies and gentlemen. It supports the broadcast. Uh, it is super organic from uh, the purest uh, place you can get it. That is mustard seed, InfoWarsLife.com or InfoWarsStore.com and Amerigeddon. Uh, the new film, $5 million budget, exposing a UN-style takeover, an fictional account, and an EMP attack is also available. Get a second copy of the film and get some of my films free with it at InfoWarsStore.com. That's InfoWarsStore.com is the general store. InfoWarsLife.com is on the same store, but that URL takes you right to the nutraceuticals. And look what InfoWars is doing. And I'll say this again. It's not about bragging, it's about you knowing mainstream media is there to make you feel like you're all alone on a deserted island. Mainstream media is there to make you feel like because you believe in the right to self-defense or you believe in free market that you're crazy, everyone loves Mao, and Mao founded America, not George Washington. Okay, and Hillary's in the best of health, and two plus two equals 50, and the Easter Bunny's real, and Santa Claus loves you, and you know, visited with uh, last night. All, all of this is just garbage. And that's why I say, get a Hillary for Prison shirt, get an InfoWars shirt, get a Molan Lambe shirt, uh, get a Bill Clinton rape shirt. And these Trump things are great because it's let InfoWars go experience what I've experienced. I, I'm walking down the street 10 years ago, and maybe one out of five people said, hey, Alex Jones. It's now, like when I was in London and stuff, it was I couldn't even walk down the street. In some case, and people see this on live stream, I'm like walking down the street live streaming, and Alex Jones, Alex Jones, Alex Jones, people all the world, Alex Jones, people from Poland, people from Russia, people from Japan, people from London, people from Pakistan, Alex Jones, Alex, and it's like, whoa, whoa. And again, it's not about, oh, look, I'm famous. It's, I'm not singing songs here. That wouldn't matter if I was famous because of that. They are resonating and agreeing with our anti-globalist, anti-New World Order message. Well, you aren't famous, okay? But when you wear a Hillary for Prison shirt or an InfoWars shirt, or a Drudge ought to sell shirts with DrudgeReport.com on it. Mm -hmm. I guarantee he'd sell 50 million of them. I'm telling you, Drudge needs to do that. He may already be doing it. I, I just, it needs to happen. I, I would promote them. I mean, I ought to license Drudge, ask Drudge if I can sell them and, you know, split out the money with them because, I mean, we need to get these out. They need to support the independent media. And uh, imagine, nobody's wearing Fox News, even though it's better than CNN. You don't see CNN shirts. You don't see MSNBC shirts. Why don't we have Drudge Report shirts? I mean, what I'm saying is, is that if you saw every 10th person wearing a Drudge Report shirt, like we're seeing in Austin with InfoWars, and bumper stickers almost on every corner, that citizen's doing that, it flips the system out, and they understand that we are cutting through their signal, we're cutting through their, their blackout, we're cutting through their iron curtain, we're coming in with the real voice of America. You wanna know what this is? This is the real voice of America, folks. Coming to you, of course, from Texas, baby, with Joe Biggs and the rest of the crew. So I'm ranting here, but the point is, you go to a Trump rally, and I've seen these videos, Sometimes in a crowd, it'd be a third, always about 15% were wearing Hillary for prison shirts or InfoWars shirts. Imagine what that telegraphs to the system. And it's all over the country. It's all over the world. And that's just little InfoWars, Joe Biggs. Zimmerman and I were at the Trump rally on Tuesday, and I had them bring me out two large boxes of those Hillary for prison bumper stickers. I'm glad you thought of that. And we filmed it. And people swarmed around us. We're like almost at the point of fighting over it. You know, and I was just. Have we put that around. video out yet? Yeah. And I was like, Clinton for San Quentin, Hillary for prison, you know, uh, you know. Let, How many Hillary for prison shirts did you see? I saw a ton on the videos. Oh, lots. I mean, way too many to even number. I mean, uh, that's everywhere we go now, though. But I guarantee you there's... I went to a Metallica concert, and they were, like, people were wearing M4s all over the place. I went to Dave Mustaine all over the place. Again, it's crazy. There's going to be 3,000 new cars in Austin, Texas, and the surrounding areas with Hillary for prison bumper stickers on it. I mean, people were like, give me two, I've got to see. Why didn't I think of that? I, we should have hit them with 10,000, 50,000. I got as many as I could, but I mean, it, it, there's going to be a lot more out there. And I think from now on at these events. By the way, are those available yet on the site?
Uh, I don't know if you can buy them, but what they're doing is every time someone makes a purchase at the InfoWars store, they throw in two or three with their uh, order as well, just as an added bonus. Well, that's incredible. Well, good job to those folks. I want to get to some of these clips. What's the name of that video so they can pull it up on YouTube? The uh, we'd have to look back at it. It, it shows a huge line of people uh, waiting. And it says uh, people go crazy for Hillary for prison or something like that. Or Austinites go crazy for Hillary for prison. Because uh, I do a chant one. And then it's the one right after that where there's a huge line. It's 15 minutes long because we just let the camera roll. As we, because I walked all the way from the very beginning of the line to the tail end, and that was around one thirty or two. That's another problem. We have so many great videos that a lot of them only get seen like thirty, forty thousand people because we're putting fifty a day out. Yeah, I mean, uh, which is still success, but this should be seen by everybody. I, I have been spending hours at night and during the day, almost getting nothing done now, just trying to watch what you guys did because yeah. it's all so informative and so entertaining. Well, one of the craziest, the one of my favorite video. It's not that long, but it's the uh, Black Lives Could Care Less About Black Lives. It's We're going to get to that in a minute, but first I want to just point out that you have won a Thug Life Award. Yeah. Uh, and for folks that don't know what these are, tell, tell the listeners. So it's whenever you basically uh, do something that's uh, pretty awesome. and uh, It's when you absolutely... You essentially just have to like drop the mic and walk away because you just did something so epic. And then they started making these videos where it's like sideways hat drops on your forehead and big glasses with diamonds and like a joint and a machine gun in your hand. And they play like some Dr. Dre song in the background. So it's... Uh, we I think it's ludicrous. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. The point is get out the way. In fact, okay, here's the short clip and then we'll play the actual clip first. Yeah. Uh, here it is. If I go to Mexico right now illegally without citizenship and I don't have a passport, I will go to jail. Good. Okay, okay. And then if you're illegal here, you should go to jail or be deported. Okay, I'm waiting for somebody to put me in jail now. Well, Donald Trump's going to do it. Stay tuned for more reports at Infowars.com. I'm Joe Biggs. All right, now let's get serious and get back to the clips. Let's play the one you said you want to play first, uh, and that is uh, the Black Lives Matter clip. Black Lives Matter, not concerned with helping black lives. Here is Joe Biggs at the Trump rally. Excuse me. How are you doing? Why are you guys out here? Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. Black lives matter. So if Black Lives Matter, did any of you guys go to Louisiana to help out? Any of you guys go to Louisiana? Did you go to Louisiana to help out? Hey, you know who did go to Louisiana? Trump. You know who did go? Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Exactly. You don't have an argument. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. When black lives matter, you act like a child. Black lives matter. I think they'd want to talk to the press. They never did. No one does. They're all sent by groups. I said, except in Louisiana. Except in Louisiana. Then go to Louisiana. And the police in the background are just kind of like smiling because they're like, yeah, you're sitting here screaming and chanting, but you're not doing anything to save black lives that are being murdered in abortion clinics or being killed by black on black crimes in Chicago. You're not doing anything. You're just sitting here and you're chanting. Meanwhile, there are people dying. So if you actually cared about black lives, you would get off your butt, do something, raise some money in, in Louisiana, go out there, get a boat, save people. Guess who went there? Donald Trump. And it's now... Over 1,500 people shot in Chicago this year. Over 90% of them were blacks. So that's over 1,000 black people shot. Over 500, almost 600 dead. And you'll literally tell Black Lives Matter about that. They just don't even look at you. They don't even hear you. They don't even care. It's drugs being shipped into the neighborhoods. It's globalism. It's the deindustrialization. It's the MTV culture. It's why those neighborhoods are like that. Not because of the cops. And we're not defending the police just out of hand. It's just a total scapegoat to destabilize these inner city areas, the Democrats are the main people are doing it, then they have the police that are the lowest level of the government, throw them at it, and then blame them like a rear guard action that, that it's their fault. But why do you go and protest Donald Trump? He's the only one that went there. It, it, took, it took days to for Obama racist. to go out there because he was... I don't need to be intellectual. You are a racist. Have you seen the meme? You're an effing white male. <laughs> Have you seen the meme where... You're a white male! There's a car under... You're a white male! Louisiana and, You're a white male! <laughs> and Obama's standing on top of the car, and it looks like he's taking a chip shop, and it says, can I play through? And meanwhile, he's standing on top of a car that's submerged underwater in Louisiana, and it says, can I play through? <laughs> well, that's okay, because he's black. <laughs> oh, my God, it's ridiculous. But they're standing outside of this event protesting the only person who went there the person who went what there you there. say doesn't matter you are a white male 
We have people all over the country march up and say, safe space, white women, you name it. And they say, you are white, you're not allowed to speak. Uh, university in Chicago today came out and said they will no longer coddle students at their university, that there will not be safe spaces anymore. Oh, yeah, this mental illness is being exposed. Here it is, the college. This is the uh, University of Chicago, very prestigious our com and very liberal. Our commitment to academic freedom means, this is from the dean, our commitment to academic freedom means that we do not support so-called trigger warnings. We do not... Uh, cancel invited speakers because their topics might prove controversial. We do not condone the creation of intellectual safe spaces where individuals can retreat from ideas and perspectives at odds with their own. Again, welcome to the University of Chicago. See you in September. Sincerely, Jay Ellison, Ph.D., Dean of Students in the college. I think they're getting a lot more students that are going to sign up and want to go there. They'll probably call for him to resign. A lot of these universities, they ban everything, like up in Missouri, apologize for everything, and then the then the president's people resign, and the protest continues. Yeah. And, of course, then they saw like a 30% drop in attendance. It's crazy, man. Who would pay $100,000 to send their young adult to one of these t things? I need my safe space. <laughs> Joe Biggs, we're going to break here in a moment, but I just uh, want to tell you that... Um, Things are getting crazier and crazier. What does your gut tell you about Trump? I mean, if he gets crowds of 20,000 people everywhere and Hillary can't even get 100, in fact, we should be showing some of that when we come back. I mean, her crowds are 200 is a big crowd for her now. And, and now she's suddenly nowhere to be seen. She's supposed to give this speech about -right banning media. banning right-wing media, but she, she, she she's canceled it? or It keeps getting delayed. I guess they're looking for stools and pillows to prop her up, maybe a couple more shots from her handler. You know, uh, she's... Yeah, yeah, you got handlers walking around with a needle right behind her. <laughs> you know, like in a mental institution when they take the real psycho out and they got a needle right there. Like they walk it behind her and pat Careful. her back. Careful! <laughs> like a piranha dog or something. <laughs> she's a... Uh, oh, my God, she's going to have the nuclear weapons. Oh, man. They tell us Trump is scary? Yeah, we're going to get uh, him fake security. This woman is obviously completely out of her mind. Just look at her. I study the criminality of these people. I know so much about them, just like you do, and it's just a joke. I was asking you during the break, do you think Trump's going to win? And repeat what you said. Slide. It's going to definitely be a landslide. You know, I've been all over the country to all these events, and when you see the amount of people that show up, the amount of people that come from other states and the surrounding states, other countries, uh, it's amazing. And notice, this is America. These are hardworking people that are motivated and will wait for hours and will drive to be a place. It sure proves they're the folks that, that actually do the work in this country. Well, there's also because, I mean, where are the jackass liberals? They can't even show up to protest. Hillary has to bus them in, and then they're so immoral, they'll actually wear the Bernie shirts they're ordered to have and then repeat the slogans they're given. What despicable, horrible slaves. Well, there's also been a progression, though, as far as Trump supporters, too. You know, at the beginning, back when a lot of these violent riots, protests were happening— a lot of people were scared to wear Trump shirts out in public and hats. And now when I go out all across the country, I'm seeing people in gas stations, at restaurants, proudly wearing Trump shirts. They're not in an event. They just wanted to be out and wear it. You know, and for a while, people were kind of scared to do that. And you're not seeing that anymore because we're winning. We've, we've defeated them already because people are seeing what we're showing here, the massive amounts of people coming. Absolutely. Just give people a radar, sonar ping. You've been here, what, a couple of years? Uh, almost three years. Now. Wow. How much do you notice now when you're on the street? A good bit. Like, on average, let's say you go downtown or go airport. Uh, you know, in Austin, you know, maybe four to five people if I go, like, on Rainy Street or something. You know, but a lot of people will recognize my voice. And then they'll go, oh, Joe Biggs, because a lot of people don't watch. It's constantly, in fact, exactly. Uh, I saw the cops coming up the hike and bike trail the other day. They were ordered to give tickets to people down there because they closed it because of the flooding. And Pat Riley was with me and my son was with me. We were hiking. And I was shooting a video, and Pat goes, look. And the cops heard my voice and went, and the, the sergeant turns around and goes, we're not giving tickets. Stop. It's Alex Jones. Turn around. <laughs> and we started getting it on video. But but my point is, is that we get more people coming up to us than when I see mainstream media folks like Charlie Rose walking around uh, in Cleveland. No one was coming up to him, so I ran over to him. He's walking around with thousands of people around. No one wants to talk to Charlie Rose. He has a morning CBS show. Supposedly yeah. with 5 million viewers. No one even cares about it. I saw him uh, one of the days, and I just kind of went, oh, look, it's Charlie Rose. And then I just kept walking, you know, because there's really no connection there for me because he's not really promoting anything that I want to be a part of. It's just that I've seen him before. I've seen some of his shows, and I was kind of like, oh, look, he's there. Exactly. People but are almost emotionalists about the establishment media.
But when we go out to these events, like at the Trump rally, tons of people were coming up to us there. And we had a lot of fans of the Democrat deal. Oh, tons. I mean, it was ridiculous. The police in Philadelphia, I was walking by, and this guy goes, yo, Biggs. And I looked over, and it was uh, two uh, black cops on bikes, and they were standing in front of the uh, the wall that was there to keep people out. And they're like, yo, man, tell Alex we said, hey, man, we love this show, man. We watch you guys all the time. Well, I mean, I don't want to get up in trouble, but we were cheered by the Secret Service like everywhere we went. I had this really big tall guy come running at me in a bulletproof vest, and he's got a gun in Philadelphia. And I was like, what the hell did I do? And this guy goes, can I get a picture? I love you guys. I'm like, hold on. Or it wasn't ATF. It was Homeland Security. And I was like, yeah, sure. He's like six foot eight, and I'm like five nine. And I'm sitting here like, all right, man, this next time, don't run at me so quick, man. I didn't know what was going on. Uh, Trying to have a little PTSD there. Yeah, right? I was like, what the hell, man? But it's everywhere. Like the, the, the Cleveland Police Department just loved us. I mean, just responsive. I mean, yeah, well, don't, don't tell people. Don't, don't tell them. Anyways, it's pretty ridiculous. It's yeah. pretty ridiculous. And, and again, that's got to worry Hillary. Oh, definitely. I mean, I've been to her rallies as well, and it's very lackluster. Most of the people that go to her rallies are going to hear her lie in person because they just want to see that in person for once in their life. And I want to be clear about something. We're going to hold over in the next hour. I think is going to be joining us from the other studio, from the radio studio. We're here in the TV studio. But, of course, they're bad cops. Of course, they're bad people in every group. We want to reform some of the problems that the globalists brought into the police. But here's the deal. America's getting taken down by outside globalists. The proof's coming out in emails. And Americans are all rallying together, whether you're a cop, a citizen, black, white, it doesn't matter, Hispanic, together to try to save this country. Epic history's happening. And America's not flat-footed. We are awake. We're growing. And we're ready. 25 years ago, when I first got politically involved, I would go speak at city council because it was on cable and people would see it. I would go speak uh, at the county commissioners and I would bring up the New World Order, world government. I would read quotes by David Rockefeller about destroying our sovereignty, Senator Goldwater fighting back, and they'd laugh at me and make jokes. See, people aren't laughing now. And that's my point. As bad as stuff is, the police are awake because the globalists went too far with their Soros plan and started saying go kill cops and stuff and the police know about how they do this in third world countries so they're like oh my god the worst is true the military's basically almost completely awake unless somebody's really stupid and they're in trouble joe Bix. yes they are and with the military that that point being made that's very true you know there's a lot of soldiers that i was in with that are still in who watch the show religiously who watch it before i even knew the show existed back when i was in iraq and like 2014 and stuff that we're watching the show and listening to your videos and watching your documentaries and i didn't even know the show existed most of them thought i was such a gung-ho soldier when was this they were scared to tell me like back in 2013 all the way through 2013 when i got out you know i never knew the show existed until after i got out with the whole hastings thing yeah you know but most of the soldiers wouldn't even come to me and tell me about it because they thought i was such as a gung-ho u.s army by the book you know rambo type guy and when I got out and started working here, everybody just started emailing me and calling me like, you work for Alex Jones. That's the most amazing show ever. I was about to add. I was about to add, though. That's compartmentalization. Everyone feels like they're alone. We're all decompartmentalizing right now yeah. and realizing, hey, we're the majority. And yeah. we're not black. We're not white. We're patriots. Well, I mean, I did a report earlier this week on Monday where the U.S. Army had a OPSEC brief. And in the slide, it listed Hillary Clinton as a security threat with her mishandling of classified materials, along with General Petraeus and all that. And notice they said no comment, which means it's real. Well, the story that I came out with was Monday. Later Monday night, uh, the Army pulled the slide from their briefs that had been going on for almost over a year. Then Tuesday, NBC covered it. Then Wednesday, the Army came out yesterday in uh, Army Times and said that they pulled Hillary Clinton. Oh, see, I didn't, slide. I didn't know that, but I said, no, that's real. Because when they say no comment, that means real. Oh, yeah, it was real. It was a real slide that was in circulation for about 18 months, and the Army pulled it down after the backlash from the videos. Well, that's because the Army is openly ignoring Obama and Hillary at this point because they're not our leaders. They are foreign imposters. General Flynn, all of them know, folks. I mean, this is a big deal. It's a, it's a soft coup as... Mm -hmm. uh, Pachenik, and Pachenik's been running around to the generals and stuff. They've been meeting and things. That's the thing. People, the listeners and stuff, I don't tell people a bunch of stuff because it's so historic, so over the top, that I can't even believe I'm in the middle of it. But just just believe me. The only reason I'm alive is the good Lord above, but also there's so many good people and agencies that I'm under full surveillance for my own safety. I mean, I've been told in the threat fusion centers and stuff, everything I do is watched, and that's to protect me. Yeah. Is that not crazy?
I believe that 100%. <laughs> when I go and I go to do some of these reports and these police come up to us or the FBI contacts me and says, hey, we're watching you in Mexico when you're going down there looking at this. What did you find out? It, you know, they're watching. Yeah, and so I realized the PSYOP, they would come in, corrupt our government, take it over, have the government do bad stuff, and then have us have a war with our government so they come in after. No, we're not doing that. We, we've caught you. We know your plan. You are screwed, Soros. You are screwed. And I was I, I played along with fighting with the cops and stuff before I paradigm shifted in the last decade. And it's just part of getting older and more sophisticated. And we're all learning more faster and faster now, too. Yeah, it's not flip-flopping. As you get older, you start to understand the world better. You start to see behind the curtain. You start to uh, understand everything clearer. And that's what the show does is it, it kind of... Imagine being born with a pair of glasses on, but they're really foggy. And as time progresses, you, you start cleaning them off and you start to be able to see clearer and clearer. And eventually you get to a point where it's all clear and you can see it. And it's scary. But it's like you're driving through the mountains and you go through the cloud cover. All of a sudden you're up above the clouds. You see the, the blue sky and the mountains and the moon rising. And you're like, this is incredible. Yes. And that's what it's like. It's just more and more. We're just like, whoa, we can see for miles and miles and miles, hundreds of miles. And, and, and we're all seeing this together. Mm -hmm. We're all sharing the same truth. Well, Salon that normally is promoting pedophilia and how great it is to lust after four-year-old girls. I'm not kidding. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is like something that is a running theme of these people. because it, it's, it's a war on decency. We have to bring them to heel. Watch a decade of Hillary Clinton's shameful hypocrisy on racism. And they, they make a joke out of it. You know, it's like what I talked about Uma Abedin. Has she had sexual mutilation? Because her parents are serious Muslim scholar clerics, and her mother promotes Sharia law, which means you cut a woman's genitals off. And they had, I, I, I'm not exaggerating, at least 10 national news stories and newspapers, you name it, attacking me and Roger Stone for saying, who knows, does she have her genitals? And they said, oh, we're obsessed with women and don't know about women and are digging through our sister's underwear drawer. And, it, it, and these articles all kind of, because I read like four or five this morning, were like fetishy, like they kind of liked it. It was like they were playing to their pervert readers. We're like serious, man. This woman runs around these flower outfits and stays in the same hotel room with Hillary and all this. We're not saying it's bad that they're lesbians, whatever. Uh, the point is, is that then they support Sharia law that would kill a lesbian. That's what we're talking about, media, Blue State, all you different newspapers and publications. Not that, oh, we're obsessed. Well, we are obsessed, but the point is not obsessed like we don't know anything about it, like like we're trying to discover something. I mean, give me a break. Uh, these people are crazy, Biggs. It's Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> they loved. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Let's support Sharia law and the Islamic terrorists. Please cut my head off. And they just guide the guy's hand holding the blade up to their neck, and they just love it, and they're smiling and giggling. And, and they have thing. writers that sit there drooling and then showing videos of four-year-old girls. I, I mean, That you, was sick. I saw that. This guy comes out with this video and says he's a pedophile, and he doesn't want to be looked at like he's inhumane or he's some bad person. He's like, I've never really done anything with a child, but I do have sexual fantasies with young girls. I'm, no, that's completely and totally messed up. We should not be promoting that. Meanwhile, the same liberal media says arrest a guy if he's 18 and his girlfriend's 17. No, that they should amend the statutory rape laws, okay? But when but when it's a guy going after, you know, your five-year-old daughter, execute them. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, it is just the craziest stuff. Uh, I mean, let me tell you, I, when I was 16, I had girlfriends that were 25. And uh, that, that was not statutory rape, I'll assure you. <laughs> I'm not trying to get graphic. It's, it's just true. I'm not bragging. It, it is true. Uh, I tell you, uh, what a crazy world. I wish I was as good looking as I was when I was 20, though. I remember when I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I used to live in Panama City Beach. Was that a time? Oh, my gosh. Well, I'm sure. Here's the deal. They call it perverted, and they control the Christian churches. Because I'm a Christian. I love God. But I'm a man. I mean, God made me. Look, all the stuff King David did. I'm just not a hypocrite about it. It's normal that I appreciate God's creations, you know, full-grown women. That's supposedly Christians get more upset when I talk about how beautiful women are. But then it's like the, they're promoting pedophilia on the news. And, and we've allowed Christians to kind of lose the moral high ground by getting so upset 
at like, you know, men liking women in bikinis you don't and then going out and screaming, you know, God hates fags, kill gay people to make Christians, you know, not look loving. And then meanwhile, you give away your moral high ground and the pedophiles come out and take over. You don't want to see. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, you don't see beekeepers in the water playing around and swatting the water and chasing after the bee. Well, by the way, it's true that when they put these burkinis on, in fact, I, I had an article on that today. In fact, <laughs> let's pull that up if we can on screen. When they have these burkinis on that are literal Teletubby outfits that full-grown women are wearing, <laughs> and they're out there at the beach, the French are like, but the thing is, they grandstand. And Bracken talks about, in the next phase of Islam, they do this to parade around and make you uncomfortable. And see, they enjoy it. They get off on it. These are Stockholm Syndrome enslaved women with their genitals cut off in many cases. But the inventor of the burkini has now come out and attacked Sarkozy. Uh, who's a bad guy, by the way, for, for supporting the, the burqa ban, and, and said, you don't get the style. C can we pull up close-ups of the burkinis, please? I mean, not just the faraway shot, but these women look like they're wearing giant condoms or something. Well, the one lady, she had like a beehive in her hand or something. On the <laughs> <laughs> like, well, the, to, tried to fill it the holes with sand or something to kill the bees, I guess. The point is, the is that is here's bad. the deal. You come to France, the inventors of the bikini, not much good How about are the you gonna French for that? Oh, the French are great people, actually. They're, they're socialists are horrible. But look at this. <laughs> what is the point of going to the beach? And they'll say, oh, don't bully. These are people that want to bully my women. My, they'll say, that's sexist. Yeah, you're right. They're my women. My, my family, my daughters are mine. We they're not putting free. on your damn beekeeper outfits. Ain't happening, Jack. Yeah. We want them to be free. We want them to dress how they want to dress. They should have that's because you're a racist, sexist, homophobe. Islamophobe. Which is why I'm still alive. Look at this. I mean, look at this. I mean, it's a clown outfit. <laughs> look at that. I like the Teletubby. <laughs> look at this. Like look at this. <laughs> hey, Anthony Gucciardi, I'm going to bring you in right now. Oh, this is going to be like oh the my gosh. secret photo shoot. <laughs> Anthony, we make the joke that sunglasses, cars, and suits are all best when they're Italian and shoes and everything else. But I tell you, maybe if you have an Italian designer of burkinis, would that make it okay? <laughs> I think that must be it. And did you see that uh, they said now if you post a picture of someone enforcing the burkini law and uh, like writing a ticket or whatever, they're going to come after you legally? Who the, is? The, the French government. I have the article right here. It What's says it. Trendy? They well, that's trendy. That's totally schizophrenic. Exactly. Uh, they tell the newspapers, okay, we're going to enforce the law, but we don't want to, so don't show the photo. Go ahead and Show the article. Here we go. Everything is so loaded. Perception becomes a reality. It's totally insane. They could just say anything they want, say you're racist, say you're homophobic. Yeah, it's it's um, from The Independent. I sent it to the producer. It says... Yeah, let's do a document cam shot. We can show that sure. in there. Burkini ban. France threatens legal action against social media users for sharing photos of police enforcing law. So it says, I am denouncing a manipulation that undermines the local police. And uh, they're threatening legal action against social media users for sharing photos of police enforcing a ban on the burkini, which is one But right it's here. a public place, so there's no perception of privacy. That's my big beef with police worldwide. I get that cameras cause you problems. They also help you in a lot of cases. That'll help get rid of bad cops. Stop giving people tickets or arresting people that are videotaping police. They've backed off a lot on that in the U.S. That is outrageous by the French. I just love the ridiculousness of all of it. It's like... It's completely insane. Just like they had the burkini-only pool days. Well, now it's like, okay, well, we're going to put this policy forward, but then the other side. Oh, yeah, in Germany, say, they have pool days just for the Muslims. Yeah, exactly. But now you can't even take and they a picture. And they have the girls now in Germany wear wristbands at all the pools saying, don't rape me in Arabic. And, hey, also, the Egyptian police, I couldn't print the story because it wouldn't work. The Egyptian police are using um, gay and lesbian uh, dating apps, smartphone apps, and then busting the people using them and arresting them. And but that's OK. That's fine. Right. We're, there was a, we're bad. Look, look at all the actually oppressive countries, and the actually <laughs> oppressive people. They're great. And we should defend their honor in the United States, though. If you say something that could potentially harm someone, you're a really, really bad person. Like you're bad. You said you're women. What you meant is you actually care about the women in your life. So you consider them so important to you that, you know, they're like your women in, in your life, like your mother or whatever. They're mine. But me, you're bad. Me you're and McGreen were in uh, Eugene, Oregon. And we're at this like Whole Foods site place where they had these little trendy restaurants in there and we're covering one of the Trump rallies. And he was inside looking around at some of the stuff. And I walked in and one. there was this giant swarm of bees. And I kid you not, 
there's this lady in the whole Burke outfit, and everyone's like running from it. She just goes right through, it just breezes right through, like nothing's even. So going there's up. the answer. And it, she didn't get stung, and I was like, wow, it is a beekeeper suit. <laughs> and I was like, McBree, look at this, it works. Really? Where is this video? Uh, no, there was no video. We were just walking to go get lunch, and I'd seen that, and there was just like thousands of Oh, my God. You actually saw a woman in a burka run through the, like, she walked right through this bee swarm. I mean, there was thousands, <laughs> thousands. And there was a guy in this other, he was in an actual bee suit, and he's standing up on a on a ladder, and he's trying to get this nest down or hive down or whatever. And by the way, let me say this. They use our open, truly liberal society as a joke to overthrow it. I can't go to Saudi Arabia, okay, with my family and say, have my daughters, you know, even in a normal bathing suit or any, anything. So why can't they walk down the street with their faces uncovered? Why aren't they open to me? Why do I have to be open to them? Do you understand that fake liberals? Why do you think they're so cuckold, uh, Anthony? Why does the left want to commit suicide? I love that word. Well, you know, <laughs> here's the best. We should be able to make a joke about anything we want. We should be able to talk about anything we want. We have a joke. I'm 100% Italian. And what's our joke? We call me Shinebox. From the the good fellas, go get your shine box. We make jokes all the time. Who cares? Well, that is your idea to do that. It's yes. mine, of course. <laughs> it's like, my it's my joke. Well, whenever we do something really cool or something really successful, we'll go look at this. And look, or like we're an Italian suit or something. We'll go yeah. look at this damn shine boxer. <laughs> exactly. Look, look at that Lamborghini. Those damn shine boxes. Exactly. Look at these Italian sunglasses. Look at these Italian women. These these shine boxers. <laughs> exactly. It's all a big joke. It's it's self deprecating. Exactly. It's funny because the, the thing is, a lot of Italians were poor, so they were the shine shoes, and that's in the movie Goodfellas, which is really yeah. true. Italians would insult each other and say, "Now get your shine box." So I mean, we make a big joke about it. Right. It's but, not but a big see, deal. It's, it's funny. It's silly. It's it's not. Well, let's actually say we're getting offensive. on a helicopter to go survey something. And we say, "Look at us. We're look at look, we're getting in a shine box." Exactly. <laughs> it's actually good nomenclature. It's real. <laughs> but you see, <laughs> we can say that it's funny, but then you even say the word burka and people look at you, oh, because that's a hot issue right now. Oh, how dare you? Right? I, I hear people all the time go, let's get Mexican. They go, can't say Mexican. Or, yeah. I, let's get Chinese. Chinese, did you? Chinese are going to hear that. No. It's like mental illness, man. It is crazy. <laughs> people asked me specifically about you talking about uh, you can't say Mexican, right? They were like, no one says that. One, one time we were uh, talking with somebody, I don't know who it was, and there was someone there that said, well, don't call it Chinese food. What? What are you supposed to yeah, call what it? Supposed to call what it? are you supposed to I call it? Chinese they, last night. It was literally, delicious. Literally, it is called Chinese food on the sign of the place. Okay, I'll tell the story, but it, it, it's a court case, and I'm not getting into it. It's a court case I was successful in, but it's, it's the kind of stuff that goes on, okay? I am in a court, okay? This is this year, and I'm sitting there, and they bring up, they go, and then once he said, yeah, you know, that Hispanic guy. And then they were asking this hispanically on the stand. They go, do you think that's racist? And she goes, no, he was Hispanic. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you go, you know, that, you know, that farmer guy down the road or, you know, you know, that Hispanic guy, what's his name? Uh, you know, it's like, it's like literally words. It's like, if you say homosexual, it doesn't mean you hate gay people or heterosexual. It's the term. What if police just stopped using descriptions, which they do now, actually? But you know how it's like, you oh, know, no, no, black, no, 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 Interpol, no, the UN are that. banning saying Muslim. It's just, there's nothing. a human being right now. There's an active uh, active shooter situation right now. There's a human being on the loose. Find him. He looks like a human being. And he don't say the color of his car. We can't even say it's a car. Uh, uh, don't what's say What's the vehicle description? I, I, uh, he's driving a burka. What color Who knows is what he <laughs> identifies with? You can't even say he's wearing a beekeeper suit. <laughs> <laughs> They're wearing a Teletubby outfit. <laughs> They're at the beach. It's, it's a woman in a Teletubby outfit with if religious groups want to cover themselves up and, and, you know, not be out there in a bikini saying, hey, I'm ready to, you know, mate and, you know, find a man, that's totally reasonable. Like the Amish and folks. My issue is with the Islamists, this is part of a law, part of being conquered, part of coming in. They make the women do this. The Amish let you leave. In fact, they push you out for a year and say, you know, maybe we don't want you. You know, when you're a teenager, right at that time to make your decision. It's not that way with the Islamists push freedom. If you want to do that, then you should make that decision yourself and carry that out. But we're not bad criticizing the burkas. No. We have that right, we're, see? We're criticizing the fact that women are being forced to do this, and many of them don't want to. In Iran, there's a huge campaign uh, campaign going on right now. Uh, men in burkas or something like that is a hashtag, and men are actually putting on these outfits and letting the women dress in regular conservative clothing in support of this, pointing out the ridiculousness of this whole law in Iran. But yeah, you know, we ought to have a day here, people want to opt into it, where we men all wear burkas on air.
and we just cover our just see how it feels to be wearing a, a freaking Halloween mask. <laughs> <laughs> Four hours of beat. Finally get to wear a dress. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Anthony Gucciardi. Um, Biggs is going to ride shotgun with him because I know you invited him to. He's got some other clips he's going to play and cover a bunch of news you've gotten ready for the show with. But since Biggs mentioned this, new international policing protocol. It's international. Our orders come from international. All these alphabet groups run by the same globalist. Don't link terror attacks to Islam or ISIS. Protocol 12 is beyond even what Obama says, which is official. They, when they're investigating a mosque, they can't say mosque. Islam, Muhammad, they can't ask those questions. Actually, there's like a list of 15 things. Well, now globalists use Protocol 12 to cover up jihadist attacks in the West, and they're just not even allowed to say it's Islamic. In fact, they can't even go investigate the Islamic sinners because it just it isn't Islamic. ISIS, that's the thing that has nothing to do with Islam. The next time there's a terror attack, we should take the article that breaks down. We should take the article that breaks down all the information and black out with a Sharpie any kind of word like that, you know, Islam, this and that, and then just read it out and be like, you know, a man walked into a, from a book. Another 50 people were killed in Turkey today in a, in a daily suicide bombing, uh, but it has nothing to do with Islam. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, you know what's really powerful to watch is the video of the women who were freed from the Islamic State capture in whatever town they were in and whatever, whatever country, and basically ISIS had taken over their little town. And they took off their burqas and they were burning them. And they were crying, and they were like, oh, my God, it feels so amazing hey, that's to that's enough of again. your white savior crap, it's bad, okay? Right? You're a white male. You're not allowed to talk. Shut up. I know, but how dare we talk about this? All evil bounce from you, Gucciardi. It does, actually. But think about how many women true. out there despise that, that want to be able to have that freedom to choose what they want. Look at these women burning these, these hot hoods they've got to wear. I've had to wear that stuff before <laughs> in some of these skits. It's not comfortable. I mean, look at it. It's, that, it is, and then, and then people say, "Well, I it's their choice." Place completely free of the West, where I felt safe. <laughs> you do a great aid, aid Skrillex. Uh, no, no, that's Carl the Cut. Uh, no, but you do the aid Skrillex earlier. That was on You're point. I have, to have, I have to bend forward like, like a buzzard when I talk, though. Carl the Cut's hard. Uh, right, here, let me go ahead and try it. Here, hold on. <clears throat> Never go full Alex Jones. I'm about to do it. <laughs> I hate the Western world. I want to crap all over Western values. I'm going to join ISIS. Yeah, yeah, me too. Oh, that'll be great. And me. I think I, I think that was on point. I can tell you've watched it a few times. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding me? We only watch it five times a day. I know, I know. It's very, it's, it's, it should be given to it's all children. It's up there with gay fish. Oh, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> We've watched gay fish a lot. <laughs> mm. I think, see, I, I, I'm not trying to do a morning comedy show. Uh, At a certain point, I'm so serious, I like break down into gallows humor. And it's just going to get worse now until about 2 a.m. this morning. I can tell you, I'm thinking I'm going to go crazy today. <laughs> today? Uh, you're going to get crazy today, huh? We're going to have to go to the shine box. Go to the shine box <laughs> operation over here. <laughs> I know, I'm all alone in this shine box you over here. You all the secrets, Anthony. Uh, I know, I, I, I revealed too much on this program today. <laughs> <laughs> now, secretly getting orders from the Vatican? Yes. Or is it Israel today? <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, no one's getting any orders around here. That's why it's so bad and so good. That's the Big, problem. How many orders are happening around here? I, I'm told to, hey, what do you want to cover? And go cover it. You know, if you're going to talk about something, you're going to bring up something that's happening in the country, go shoot a report. Go talk about it. Give your viewpoint on it. Put Meanwhile, other there. media is micromanaged because there's always a corporate message they want out. Yeah. We literally do have more freedom here to cover the things we care about, to cover the things we want to, to cover these hot topics that are unfolding, the breaking news, without anyone standing over our shoulder. The only and if you want to randomly act like Aid Skrelix, you can, and just suddenly <laughs> say, ISIS, that's the group that has literally nothing to do with Islam. W Sorry. When I, when I cross the Rio Grande vi uh, River, dress up like an ISIS <laughs> jihadi, that's an idea that popped in my head, and I called Dio. I was like, do you think this is a good idea? He's like, go for it, do it. Show the open border. Yeah, yeah, the only stuff we're really, like, original investigative reporting where we're actually with sources and stuff. Then we have to meet about that a lot and stuff, yeah. and we have to vet all that and make phone calls and things. But other than that, uh, we're just doing commentary and analysis. We're, we're going to come back. Stay with us. We have major breaking news here as we're live on the air at 2.33 Central Time. Uh, just a few minutes ago, because we were getting ready to go to her speech uh, as she was concluding it, Hillary Clinton in this big uh, event.
that, that she's been talking about for so long, where she was going to expose Donald Trump, she came out with more half-truths, lies, innuendo, hypocrisy, where we've got all these videos of her saying, build a wall, build a fence, deport felons, deport illegals. She said it in the 90s. She said it in the 2000s. She said it in 2008, running against Obama. It's all lies about Trump. It's all twisted spin, half-baked BS. And then she did it to me. And I'm the big un... You know, you don't say Alex Jones. You never say the name Alex Jones. They always say the one from Texas, which is yeah. so honorable. I'm known as the Texan, thank God. That's right, slime. And we're here standing against you. We don't care. We're committed. But more and more, they have to speak the name that no one says. It's like in Lord of the Rings, he says, Saruman. He goes, Sauron, oh, say the name. I mean, they will not even speak it. I love it that they won't speak my name. In fact, this bums me out. That, that, that Hillary, the arch criminal, is actually speaking my name. It loses some of the mystique uh, to be the you know, unspoken one. But let me get serious because I'm going to respond to this live here on air right now. Hillary Clinton just minutes ago concluded, while we were live on air at 2.35 uh, currently, Hillary Clinton just concluded her live speech where she was going to destroy the KKK uh, kingpin Donald Trump. The problem is we have her saying one of her main mentors was Senator Robert Byrd, who was a Grand Dragon and a Supreme Cyclops and all these other stupid uh, comic book names the KKK has for themselves. Green bed sheets. <laughs> uh, it's really weird. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a gang. You think just black people and Mexicans or whatever have gangs? The KKK is a white gang, okay, of, of degenerates. I mean, everybody's got their own degenerates, and that's what's going on. So Trump has disavowed over and over again. She goes into that. She goes into everything else. She's saying, shut down Breitbart. I mean, these are open statements, very dangerous tyranny. And she goes on to say, it's what happens when you listen to the radio host, Alex Jones, who claims that 9-11 and the Oklahoma City bombings were inside jobs. He said the victims of the Sandy Hook massacre were child actors and no one was actually killed there. Now, let's stop right there because that's lies and twisted disinformation. I said the Saudi Arabian government helped fund 15 of the 19 hijackers, and I said that there was a congressional investigation in 2002 that found that Saudi Arabia quarterbacked the 9-11 attacks and that bipartisanly high levels of the government blocked that investigation and blocked the FBI from even stopping uh, the hijackers before it happened because of the Saudi connection, and they basically stood down. Mm -hmm. Now, I was interviewing the whistleblowers and FBI people back in 2002, 3, 4, 5. I was having members of the CFR on and others, high-level former spy chiefs like Dr. Pachinik. I mean, I had my sources, but it was in the news that Saudi Arabia was involved. It just came back up with the 28 pages and has been proven correct. So they condense it down to like a Warner Brothers cartoon where I'm saying George W. Bush had the plunger blowing up the buildings. In fact, that's what Hardball always says. Jones says Bush literally had a detonator, and, and, and like Wiley Coyote blew it up. That's what they say. I didn't get that analogy from myself. They say that. I didn't say that. I said Bush was literally not even like the president. It was Dick Cheney. But it was much more sophisticated than that, and it's all come out. Now, let's talk about Oklahoma City. Let's, let, let's talk about Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City was a total false flag with NATO, the ATF, and the CIA, and the FBI. And we know the names of the men from the witnesses in the building, from the police officers, and from the declassified information that came out, the bombs in the building. General Parton, the former head of Air Force Weapons, he went public about the bombs being inside, the outside being a diversion. It goes on and on and on. And so, yes, that was a false flag. And you ask, why do they use foreign agencies? That way they're all involved. Nobody can blackmail the others. And it's been declassified. The London Guardian's reported the Germans have been caught doing bombings to blame right-wing groups as well as a national program in the 90s. They also, the British got caught leading the IRA. They actually led it from the top. The IRA didn't even know for decades. And it was the British government ordering the IRA to bomb to discredit the IRA. That is London Guardian, Associated Press, BBC. Look at it for yourself. So... Yes, I do say that was a false flag completely. There's different types of false flags. 
Uh, and then they say that I say Sandy Hook massacre, that none of it happened. There have been top school safety experts that have come out and said that it's a cover-up. There have been major anomalies like Anderson Cooper using blue screen when he's not really at Sandy Hook. And uh, we've seen CNN claiming that they were in Riyadh under Scud attack when they weren't. Remember, that's famous. I just said it should be investigated. Clearly, the whole story doesn't add up. Some people say it's all child actors. Some people say all this. That's not what I'm saying. There was a drill that day. A lot of weird stuff went on. So that's what I'm getting at here. Now, Joe Biggs was in here live in studio breaking down other news with us. We're going to go back to him in a moment and Anthony Gucciardi. But I wanted to go ahead now that we have the clip and play uh, Hillary Clinton now planning to use Alex Jones as an attack on Trump. Uh, and, and again, this is meant to have him not use key ammo against Hillary like, hey, there might be election fraud. Well, now the U.N.'s coming to oversee the election, saying there's going to be election fraud. Trump's been proven right again. We're covering real things, and she wants to illustrate this and act like well, she's none scared of what's happening. Right. She's scared of the alternative right news. That's what she's going after. She thinks that us being out here exposing all this, you know, uh, she's trying to push this whole conspiracy thing to take away from the fact that we really are exposing criminal activity that's going on. There's well, sure, and they misrepresent. I mean, the truth is, I'm proud that I said there was something going on 9-11, including the dust, and they now admit it was deadly, and they covered it up. I was right about that. I mean, this is common sense. Uh, Oklahoma City was totally a false flag. World Net Daily got the hotel receipts of the head of the FBI hostage rescue team there days before at, 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 at you know the hotel, and his whole team, he said he was in Dallas and didn't get there till that afternoon. I mean, we have it. We have the witnesses that saw him, identified him on TV. These guys were crazy enough to go plant bombs in the building and then go do press conferences at the bomb site. And the people that were working in the federal building were like, that's the guy planting the bombs. I've had all the witnesses on, Jane Graham, all of them. You know, the, I've had the cops on, the ones they didn't kill and torture to death. And you know who's running the show then? Within 10 minutes of the Oklahoma City bombing, who did Hitlery and Bill Clinton blame? Rush Limbaugh and talk radio, and then later, you know, Matt Drudge and everybody, uh, the, they're coming after the press, folks, and they're scared of us, so they want to have this fake moral authority, like they're up there on the high mountain going, and he talks to the kook, Alex Jones, and in the desert, he goes to an oasis and drinks good water. What a kook. I mean, oh, the, I mean this is, see, these people, but see, that's why they admit now they want to censor us, and that's why they said Breitbart and other uh, uh, grassroots conservative media has no right to exist because we're kicking your butt with the information because it's the internet age. We can show you say build a wall 15 times and then say Trump's a bigot because he wants to build a wall. We can show what a fraud you are, lady. By the way, she looked like hell, like she was propped up during this press conference. Here it is. There she is, our The Kennedy queenie. assassination. Now, perhaps in Trump's mind, because Mr. Cruz was a Cuban immigrant, he must have had something to do with it. Let's hit pause. And there is... Let's hit pause. No, his dad lived there. His dad was connected to serious organizations and groups. Uh, and you notice his dad, the, the whole thing got dropped a day later. See, all of it is a lie. See, we consider and analyze all of it. All of it is a lie. Now he doesn't like immigrants because Ted Cruz uh, uh, came from immigrants. No, we have the intel and we have... The girlfriend of Lee Harvey Oswald, who was CIA, saying, no, I knew Cruz. And then he's in photos. He's a very distinctive-looking guy. It looks like Rafael Cruz. And let me explain something. Most of the Cubans that came in in the year before all that stuff kicked off, that's when Cruz came in, were working for the CIA. The CIA is bigger than Walmart and Coca-Cola combined, okay? I go to family reunions, and I'm not even proud of it because I built everything myself. Okay, it's not cool to be in the CIA. Okay, and, I, and and my family, it's not like analysts and people and pencil pushers. It's like the Legion of Doom with eye patches. Okay, and I'm not even proud of that. The point is, is that I know CIA when I see it, and that's Rafael Cruz. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, she's doing everything she can to divert the attention away from the emails, to divert the attention away from her failing health, and she's trying to use this to to blame you, to blame Drudge, to blame. Breitbart, and it's completely and totally pathetic. We have stacks and stacks of paper every day showing the criminality behind the Clinton Foundation, showing her failing health, showing that she doesn't have the ability to hold the highest office that we have in the U.S. 
as president. And she wants to attack you. That's like, it's such a low blow. Well, and, and look, look, and, and it's because they're the scared most- of the info. The, 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 the reverse psychology, and Pachenik will agree with us. He's former top psyops of the State Department. I'm going to get him on tomorrow if he can come on. Let's get him on. Is, is that whatever they're really afraid of, they put out there like it's been discredited. It's, it's a Jedi mind trick, you understand? Yeah. But Trump sees all that and is countermanding his staff continually. And that, I can say that. I mean, look, Trump is on board. The problem is it's hard to find people at that level from the political class that aren't, you know, idiots. Okay, but but let's, let's I'm sorry, I, I digress with her talking about Ted Cruz because every line is just a load of disinformation. See, it took me five minutes just to decipher that steaming pile of horse manure. Let's go back to the source uh, of the deception, the creature known as Hillary. Of that. Just recently, Trump claimed that President Obama founded ISIS. <laughs> he said you did, too. And he has repeated that over and over again. Because you did, winch. His latest paranoid fever dream is about my health. <laughs> and the giant diaper you're wearing. <laughs> and all I can say is, Donald, dream on. <laughs> dream on. I, I see sickness He's in your eyes. He's been taking naps for the last three days. Look at that barracuda, man. Look at that demon. Man, oh, man, I can't handle her. Woo! Look at the Woo! bags under her eyes. The next, uh... <laughs> bag. She could literally star in the new Batman as a Joker. No makeup needed. But, my friends, this is what happens when you treat the National Enquirer like gospel. <laughs> they said in October I'd be dead in six months. <laughs> it's also what happens when you listen to the radio host, Alex Jones who claims that 9-11 and the Oklahoma City bombings were inside jobs. He even said, and this really just is so disgusting, <laughs> he even said the victims of the Sandy Hook massacre were child actors and no one was actually killed there. I don't know what happens in somebody's mind She's or such a how liar. dark their heart must be. Wow. To say things like that. How dark my heart must be. But Trump He's a doesn't challenge demon. these lies. She loves my he heart. He actually went on Jones's show and Empire's said, "Empire's never seen such giant Your reputation is amazing. I will not let you down." Let's back her up. This man, I didn't know from the transcript she went on a whole rant about me. Back this up. Wow, my black heart. Hey, baby, big, juicy, and red, and you know it, and not afraid. And that's what she can't stand. Wow, I was watching some of it earlier in the break, and she didn't look that animated and that angry. When she starts talking about me, she like, these people must be like, got the red button ready to pull the trigger on me. Just, oh, can make me great? Oh, boy, just watered the tree. Boom, boom. I mean, I don't want to die, but let me tell you. Huevos Rancheros right here. I mean, I, I am born to bring you down, lady. So I'm a little bug, huh? Step on me. <laughs> Can I, this, is, like five. this is ecstasy, actually. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't say there was child actors. We've had guests that say that, had debates, and had the other guy that you know, says it's all real on. <laughs> we've had debates like CNN does. You know, people saying nothing happened and people saying it all happened. Uh, I mean, we've really got her here. Uh, because be, now in Oklahoma City, I, I did say it's a stage. I mean, I know the names of the bombers. Would you like me to tell you? I've had the head of the canine squad that was there two minutes after. He knows all of them. They came to his office and said, we're going to kill you. His name's uh, Don Browning. He's in Oklahoma City. Decorated Marine Corps veteran and uh, head of the K-9 unit. You want, oh, oh, you don't want to talk to Don Browning. That saw the NATO op, the FBI operator, the CIA operator, the ATF operator. And I got a hand to these agencies. They had high-level guys, heads of departments stringing the gray sticks of butter. She's like, what are you doing in the stairwell? They're like, oh, telephone work, dear. And I remember she says, Jane Graham said, I was struck by how handsome they were. And so she was like, well, what are you guys doing? And she was, I guess, and they were like, I'm going to move along, sweetheart. We're doing some important work right now. <laughs> oh, and you had the deputy attorney general at the time mm -hmm. running the operation. Sorry, uh, let's, uh, l let's back it up and go back to it. Here it is. Never were ready with Hitlery. Maybe we've lost audio. I'm not sure. We had audio earlier, but sometimes we were doing these DVRs. They do this. Yeah, you guys got the audio? It must be to say things like that. But Trump doesn't challenge these lies. No, no, I want to back he it up, guys. Went on, I want to back it up.
Back it up to the start. Like, back it up a minute. That is the most, that is ambrosia. I mean, she, the, the liar, the criminal, the, the founder of ISIS that brought al-Qaeda into Syria, that murdered hundreds of thousands of Christians with her co-founder at the Legion of Doom, Obama, these horrible demons, and she's talking about my black heart. It's, my heart is so big and red and juicy. I do this for love, lady. I don't do this to, to count a bunch of... $30,000 a person per plate to come hang out with her. <laughs> oh, my God. And it's not that I'm being recognized by them. I mean, the, I, they run Media Matters. They attack me every day now. They attack me all over the CNN, MSNBC. But to have the demon itself try to turn InfoWars into some weapon that's going to bring down uh, Trump, when, of course, Trump's winning by a landslide. They are panicking. They are completely freaking out. Okay, do we have the DVR queued up now? Here we go. Here it is. And he has repeated that over and over again. His latest paranoid fever dream is about my health. Yeah, I'm going to skip the break. This will be a day long remember. And all I can say is, Donald, dream on. <laughs> Young got that smile. She looks like family members of mine after they've been dead a couple of days laying on the slab. Those gums are coming back off those teeth, aren't they, sweetie? That but soul wants Hillary. to get out of there. But my friends. <laughs> Man, I've got so much energy and just power surging. I love God. I love sunlight. I'm going to run up to her and give her an injection. Oh, friends, uh, here we go. This is what happens when you treat the National Enquirer like gospel. Oh, that said your husband was Monica Lewinsky? They said in October I'd be dead in six months. And you look like you are. It's also what happens when you listen to the radio host, Alex Jones, who claims that 9 11 and the Oklahoma City bombings were inside jobs. He even said, and this really just is so disgusting, <laughs> he even said the victims of the Sandy Hook massacre were child actors, and no one was actually killed there. I don't know what happens in somebody's mind or how I, I, dark I, I don't know. How did you say that? I just didn't call those Christians. I don't know. To say things like that. I didn't that. say that. But Trump doesn't challenge well, these Gaza. lies. Trump he doesn't. actually went on Jones's show and said, your reputation is amazing. I will not let you down. <laughs> they hate this that. from the man who wants to be president of the United States. You know, I've stood by that President Obama's side as he made the toughest decisions a commander in chief has to make. When she said in my times name, so of crisis, cheered. our country depends on steady leadership. Clear thinking. You don't look too judgment. steady, lady. Because one wrong. She said she needed a Parkinson's drug because she couldn't think clearly. We, we have your email, yet. Wench, and more is coming. More is coming. You can't stop any of us. You will fall. La, la, la. She said she had a cracked head. <laughs> oh, this is so good. Oh, oh, this is so good. Oh, oh, look at her. Help me up, we go. Between fact and fiction. And who buys so easily into racially tinged rumors. I've been waiting for this a long time. <laughs> Someone so detached from reality should never be in charge of making decisions that are oh, this is real. The best comedy. I'm serious. Oh my and god, this is so good. <laughs> that is yet another reason why Donald Trump Look at her, she's a is sack of BS. unfit to be president of the United States. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> now, I, I hear and I read some people who are saying, uh. well, the, his bluster and his bigotry is, is just overheated <laughs> campaign rhetoric. An outrageous person saying outrageous things for it. I realize her spirit is so weak, and I don't but care what they do to me. Policy. I'm with the spirit that's good. I love it. Oh, it's so good. Trump has proposed. <laughs> they she says Trump's detached from reality. Into practice. <laughs> And don't be distracted look by at our enemy. That's what they say in the Bible, and the devil's waters. locked up for a thousand years. Somebody can look at him. Everybody's going to say, this did all that? <laughs> but we know where he stands. He would form a deportation force to round up millions of immigrants and kick them out of the country. He And kick them out of the country just like their countries do. That says if you're born in the United States, you're an American citizen. Hey, can we? <laughs> we got to he take this clip and then go back when she used to, to say the opposite. Exactly. Oh my God. It's, 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 she's targeting low information people, man. Oh my God. Mm, He'd so ban enjoyable. Muslims around right, the world. Well, let's from turn it off for a minute. I can't. Anthony Gushardi, you want to pop in here? I'm sorry. I, this is.
I feel five years younger, though. This is like a... They're into blood transfusions well, yeah. of children. I'm just into this. I mean, Yesterday, this Paul was tweeting out, wonder if Hillary Clinton will even mention this in tomorrow's alt-right speech. And sure enough, here you go. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Number one. The Death Star is orbiting the planet. The Death Maximum Star velocity. is orbiting the planet and ready to fire. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, because this means that they have tried all other options of ignoring you and everything you're and doing. And now they've got to actually approach the crack And of now they are issuing the Sauron statement. Voldemort, the one who will not be named because people will Google you. And I bet you look at the trends right now. It's just crazy and people are going to the website. And also, though, we have been they just distracted. just drank hemlock. Check this out, though. We are debating her points. She can't debate our points, so she's taking things you didn't even say 15 years ago, skewing them, and then putting that up, right? So, And now everyone will hear what I really said and exactly. agree with Exactly. You need to challenge Hillary. I mean, Anderson Cooper's up there with his face disappearing at Sandy Hook. With his, and I'm like, what the hell is this? You have to do a breakdown and a thorough <laughs> analysis of this. You should do a response and challenge her to talk about all the things that you brought up instead of attacking you with ad hominem BS from 15-year-old twisted statements. If she actually could defend one thing you said, she would, but she can't, so she has to use well, sure, weird... Well, no, she's giving delusional. talking points to the media of what to go out and say I said. Oh, of course, exactly. And well, it's like I said that she has a tumor the size of a watermelon, and I said it was a joke. I said they're lying and saying Trump's behind the polls and dropping out. Uh, you know, it's not true. Like, it's not true if I say she has a, a, a tumor the size of a watermelon. And then they had articles saying Jones says she has a giant brain tumor. I mean, these people are just complete jokes. Well, what happens if they can't actually argue with the real stuff you say? They have to say that you, you know, they'll take a picture of you doing a funny face or something. It's just standard well, BS, it's the same right? thing when they Well, they also do this. I've seen media say Jones has Nazi stuff behind him. It's Obamacare next to Hitler, a bunch of Anthony back up, saying that's bad. But see, that's that's what they do. Yeah, of course, because they can't actually argue with well, your they points. They can never even they actually can't have a discussion Did you hear based Alex on anything you're saying. Hitler? Yeah, and yeah. Well, it's the same thing when we go uh, debate these social justice warriors at these events. They never have anything to say, but all they can do is say sexist, racist, Islamophobic, transphobic, and that's all they have. And all they can say against you is they go, Ooh, Alex Jones, a conspiracy theorist, but they won't actually you go. You said, who's Alex Jones? And they go, we don't know. We were told by the people that paid us to be here. <laughs> but look, they're so dumb. They're stuck in the old system. She's like Frank Underwood from House of Cards. She's like an 80s politician. She doesn't understand the Streisand effect. She att Attacking you is going to make you bigger and stronger. Help me, I'm weak, right? And then you're going to actually come back with more content delivered to her. And all the people that are Googling you from her side saying, who is this global person? They're going to say, wow, actually, all of this makes sense. So it's 100% a victory, a major success. She doesn't understand that those weighted words have no actual weight. It's all just weird things well, where she thinks she can say, three days off. conspiracy, bad person. She looks worse than ever, man. She looks drugged up. She looks... She looks like a corpse they're propping up. She probably she had to go thinks through like the whole. Everyone who follows her is so dumb they're not going to. You know when those in a, uh, uh, those NBA players come off the court and everyone's like high fiving them. She's going through and they're just jabbing her with shots to kind of boost her up so she can get to the stage. So she's like, all right, we yeah, she's an iron maiden of needles. She's an iron maiden like fifty needles. Ago. It's like when you go through basic training or whatever. It was just like it's like in Mars attacks when the Martians jump up to have the thing slam onto them with their uniforms. Like she starts off on a she starts off on a stool and they just give her enough injections where she can finally stand up. Like, Take the pillows away. Let's go. She no, they just say Alex Jones a bunch of times and she gets so mad that she's able to finally have some energy and go on stage. <laughs> You're right. Web traffic is three times more than normal. But but see, here's an example. What was it where it was like 15 times its record or something? That's the when RNC. there's like a, a mass shooting or a bombing. People tune in for us. That's why she's not even that big. People tune in to hear what we have to say about an event. Look, they you know triggered, really look, tell you the truth. this is it. Alex Jones triggered Hillary Clinton. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> this is it. Oh, you now you get a thug life. Where's your thug you life? You triggered her. Yeah, B Biggs did good. He triggered, like, an uh, immigrant over. You triggered Hillary Clinton. I think that deserves the thug life category. Well, we can do a payday with this because we can show, like, the news going Saudi Arabia involved, government stood down, like ABC the News, entire show and then cut to me like 10 years ago saying it, and they cut Hillary going, he says 9-11, and then, and then like experts say there were bombs inside the building of Oklahoma City, they cut to me, he said Oklahoma triggered, and then it just goes <laughs> down the line. All right, we're out of time. What difference does it make? Support us, purchase the products, we're independent media, we don't have globalists funding us, just like Trump doesn't. Uh, the new Selenium is back in stock. It was great with the X2. Infowarslive.com. Your call toll free 888 253 3139. Get your Hillary for prison shirts and Bill Clinton rape shirts exclusively at Infowars.com. Oh dear, I'll have to disintegrate you, pesky earth creature.